Hello, hello, hello. How you doing, man? I'm good. How are you? Pretty good, buddy. Really good. Really good. Excellent. Where is he? I'm there here. He is. I'm coming. I think. Am I? Oh my god! This Two is dots same... coming. Uh, Two dots same... are loading. Same problem I had last week. Oh my god! No. Hang on. I'm a goose. All right. I'm a goose. Well, I'm... What's up, guys? You talk. You talk, please. While I. Uh... This is yeah. our last week of the same headset, Vento. My new one's charging right here. I was just telling him about it. What is it? What is it? Mm -hmm. Tell me more. Ast Astro A50s wireless. Nice, bro. We're going wireless, bro. I was just sick of too many times where like this wire, I'll just walk away and the chair will keep spinning and I'll be like out of the room and I'll hear my headset slam on the ground and I'll just be like, fudge. I know what you mean, dude. Yeah. And I'm a cow be able to hear how bad his takes are. Yeah, like my, my room is uh, like my setup is kind of, it's, it's well kind of tidy and stuff. So I'm kind of used to the whole wired thing. I don't really kind of want the hassle of wireless. To be honest, mm. Mm. Um, I just think it might be a little bit more hassle than it's worth. Hey, it's working. We're here. There it is. Yeah, you're back. Hello. It's been it's been That's the opposite of what wireless is supposed to do. It's supposed to be less hassle. I know, but I just like the whole charging piece, and um, I don't know. I just I don't really trust it. I, you know. I think with nowadays, like I mean, like I have the Arctis Pro wireless headset, and it's been working fantastic. It has like a 20-hour battery on it, and it's swappable. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, that's yeah. why I was gonna go for those. Um, and I just heard too many. I just heard a lot of like good things about Astros as far as sound quality. At the end, I, I really wanted those, but Astros are cheaper than those. Mm -hmm. And I've been wanting to get those in the white ones. And those have been out of stock for like two months now. Wow. I think they just now recently got some of the wireless ones in black back in stock. But I still I'll still have this headset off to the side if I ever need anything longer than seventeen hours. See, and that's that's one of the best things about having two sets of like a product is if one fails, like you have a fail safe. Yeah, that was like me when like my remember when my mouse broke, and I didn't, <laughs> I did I didn't have another mouse, and I was like I like can't. You don't it. think about that stuff. I yeah. know, like, I know, hey, like awesome. burned the hard way, you know. It's like um I didn't have a mouse, and like I was like my scroll wheel broke, and like it's it's a critical button for me in Fortnite. I'm in the middle of a fucking Fortnite stream, and I'm like I can't do edits or anything or resets. And I'm like, what the fuck? I was like, I have to end my stream, and I was looking That's for called a crutch. I was looking, I was looking for glue in my scroll house wheel. and everything. I was like trying to fucking fix it. I was looking for glue, and Jeez. I was like, oh, it was a mess. And I rang my mom like she only lives like five minutes away from me. I was like, have you got glue in the house? This was at eleven o'clock at night, and she's like, yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, I'll be down in two minutes. <laughs> Drove down, got the glue, <laughs> came back, fixed the mouse, and then went back live again. <laughs> That's awesome. So funny. Um. Yeah. But it was, it was speaking of speaking of like wireless, anybody got wireless mouse? Uh -uh. No, no. This is my this is my very first one I've ever gotten. It's the uh, Logitech G903. Can't see the logo. Um, fantastic mouse. Holy Jesus! Yeah, my response is so much better. Nice. I wish that they wanted to have made wireless mouse up until they had the technology right. Because mm -hmm. I tried out wireless mice, you know, five years ago, whatever. I'm like, never again, bro. Yeah. It's never going to happen. And I hear they're great now, but like, there's just that part of me that's like, mm-mm. Mm -mm. Yeah. I, 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 I thought like the same. I thought issues I, back in the day. I, yeah, I was like, I, I presumed there would be latency issues. But apparently, a friend of mine, who's like a big CSGO player and stuff, he was saying like, you know, it's 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 on point now. Like, you wouldn't even notice the difference. Like, the, the speeds are so, mm -hmm. like, it's so tiny that you wouldn't even notice. I feel nothing, no difference whatsoever, and yeah. it feels nice to not be tied to a cord anymore. For sure, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Okay, Voltron. Do you guys uh, <laughs> like? I've never thought because I like the headset that I have now is like the first headset that I've uh, first like proper gaming headset I've ever owned. Like, do you like replace them when they break, or like would you be looking to upgrade them? That's uh, where like, like after, one, after one issue I've had with this. That, that's kind of mine. This isn't broken. It, it works fine. But one of the issues is from it being slammed all the time. There's like a little tiny plastic piece somewhere inside the right ear cup that rattles around. Yeah. Mm. And it's like inside. So like if I shake my head around, I can hear it right now. Like rattling gotcha, around yeah. in there. And um, Yeah, I just upgraded to what I heard had better actual sound quality for gaming since honestly i mean all of us have real mics so you can start looking into things that don't even have mic options that are literally just built for good sound and you'll yeah. get a lot cheaper out you'll get things that are cheaper like this headset that we have is is like 
If you're spending that much, we honestly should have got better than what we got. The price that the price on these, especially like the wireless ones that Zebra has, that's like premium, premium price. Um, and I think there's just better options. Like there's Bo uh, a lot of people like these Bose sound canceling uh, actual he headphones, not headset. I've seen a lot of people use those, and those are like 130 bucks. Yeah, I, I use my um, Astro Technica ones here. Um, this is the second pair I've owned of this, and I, I run them until the wheels fall off. I don't upgrade them. Yeah. It, I, I run them until they break. The, the, the first pair I had, I owned that pair of headphones for like four years, and they were like, I did a lot of traveling in there. Like They just got thrown in the duffel bag. Like I, I beat those things up, hmm. and they have amazing sound quality. It's like 100 bucks because you don't have a mic on it. Yeah. Um, yep. And so I, I just I took them everywhere, and I, I use them on gaming, and like all the games sound great. You know, I... I I've got Fortnite earnings on these, you know, <laughs> like it does. They're, they're good headphones, bro. Yeah. Uh, so I, I, I just, I hate gaming headphones. I hate anything that is branded towards gamers because it's like, there's like a gamer tax, right? Like they, they add extra money just because like it's for gamer. Dude. I'm like, no, yeah, stop. Like, it, don't yeah. need that. It's just a headset. The second, second, <laughs> second you put gamer on anything, you can throw an extra like, 50 on, to, on top sound, of the price easily. Yeah. 50 to 100. Like. Sound, Soundheiser and JBL make headsets now too. Like actual just audio file ish. Like seen audio, those. audio companies are just making their own stuff now. Yep, I think like the, they, the preamp I have Sennheiser, it's amazing, bro. Like it's it's fucking fantastic, dude. Fantastic. Yeah, I, I I've seen blue microphones uh with uh their headset. It's just a headphone jack headset. Nice. Literally just a headphone jack. Yeah. It's crazy. I actually have a set. I must dig them out because I used to DJ and I have a set of Sennheiser he uh, headphones from when I used to play. And I, I must be I, like I'll plug them into my computer and see what they sound like. I'd be I'd be very interested actually. I might. Pinto I DJ do. just literally playing the soundtrack list off of all the Spider-Man movies. Imagine. Every imagine. Time. My lady just put a comment in the chat there for you, Kyle. Emma, Emma was American and called. Emma. What if? <laughs> <laughs> We, we don't need that episode because uh, I met it's the happening. Variant, it's happening. Yeah. It's real. <laughs> we're in that. We're in the episode. Uh, I mean, the the this is my second pair of headsets. Like I the first one I had was the uh, Turtle Beach DPX 21s and uh, straight up wired. But like wired wired was like I felt like it was an understatement. This thing, you could literally have it plugged into a PlayStation. You could walk across the other side of the room and still have it on. <laughs> It's, the wire was extremely long. Yeah. Turtle Beach, I'll never... Uh, I, I think I fall in the same problem that Drunky said. I, I had the early Turtle Beaches, and I was just like, never again. Turtle Beach and another company called Triton, they used to do this headset that had pin connectors for the headset to connect. Yeah, it was a pin-connected cord for the headset to connect to the USB. And if you know anything about connection types, those kind of pins bend and break very easily. And if you bend or break one pin, there goes your headset. See ya. Yeah. 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 I've never enjoyed the turtle beach stuff. I never owned them, but I used them over at my friend's house and stuff. And it was like, they just seemed like bargain brand. They were never built that well. And it's just made for people on consoles who like, didn't know the wide world of like Logitech and all these other like really solid manufacturers within gaming. I would well, say HyperX Cloud 2s are probably the most comfortable headset I've ever had in my life. And they're like a hundred bucks. And it's they're funny scary. that you mentioned about the Turtle Beaches because like when I got them, I was like, man, this, this is probably just a little like, you know, gamer hype thing. You know, Turtle Beaches, you, you synonymous, synonymously like connect them with, a, you know, a PlayStation or an Xbox. This one is universal. So I was mm -hmm. able to use it on my computer as well. And the sound quality was fantastic. Like I, I like if anyone were to find those again, I would totally buy another one. Those things were fantastic. Um, but other than that, like it was wired, it was starting to get in the way. And uh, I think one of the wires was starting to become exposed and kind of like hanging a little bit. So, I mean, I could have used electrical tape and kept it, kept it running, but I was like, you know what? I'm going to spoil myself. I've never gotten a new headset and I bought a new one. Treat yourself. Yeah. Yes, sir. Guys. Let's stop talking about headsets. Let's talk about nerdy stuff. <laughs> or geeky stuff. Sorry, we're talking about nerdy stuff. We need to start talking about geeky stuff. The geekiest <laughs> stuff we know. What if this was a oh, tech uh... stream? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so do we want to start? What do we want to start with? Do you want to start with what if? Do you want to start with Suicide yeah. Squad? I think we go straight. I'll say straight. Suicide Squad since it's like the furthest one out, you know? 
I got you. I got you. Sure. Or maybe what if? Just what if? This is an MC <laughs> podcast. Let's just start with what if. Exactly. It is. It is <laughs> marvelous. I was thinking like if I start like if we start jumping out into like doing like individual content on other subjects like Star Wars and DC and all that sort of thing, does the name still work? I kind of think it does because you know it's mar it's there it's marvelous. Like the conversations are marvelous, but it's not yeah. Marvel, you know. But yeah, I, I, right. I, I, th I think yeah. the title still works, you know. So I was kind of yep. thinking about that, you know, because uh, I was talking with Kyle kind of offline. We were saying like potentially, you know, I wouldn't mind with the new YouTube channel that we have going. I wouldn't mind doing a couple of like smaller vids on the likes of just like soul content, like maybe Titans, which I know Drunky's going to hate and he's not going to watch it. And, <laughs> you know, so I'm like, <laughs> let's not include him. We'll just do me and Kyle will do a little 15, 20 minute nerd out each week or something like that. And then it kind of just yeah. keep it kind of keeps the YouTube channel going as well. You know, we're not kind of sure. dependent on doing live streams once a week. You know what I mean? I think it kind of I think it kind of pops off. It kind of works like, you know, and you can also treat it like Zoom meetings, you know, where we put in a breakout rooms and we just individually talk about stuff. <laughs> Yeah, and then bring us back in. Easily, dude. Yeah, imagine that. It's like, yeah, we're gonna yeah, we shoot off to room two now. <laughs> it's like yeah. a conference room, you know. That's hilarious, dude. Um, yeah. So, like, I think that's a, I think that's a really cool idea. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to kind of just seeing where it goes, you know, for sure. <laughs> um, yeah. So, what if, guys, we'll do the usual round table to start with. What do we think? Do we do a score? What do we give it out of ten? Episode one. Start with. Uh... I, all right, I'm, I'm gonna put this in the caveat because there are a lot of stuff I loved in this, but I think overall it was it, was, it felt kind of like a six and a half, seven out of ten for me, um, just because I felt like the editing on it was so quick and so rushed that I, I, I felt like I didn't have any time to like kind of settle into the actual story or with the characters. It just felt like we went from one scene to another. It was uncomfortably fast the way it was paced, um, and because like someone would stop talking and immediately they would go to the next scene and someone would be talking almost like they were talking to each other, uh, but it just, it, it was so quick. But the fight scenes were amazing. The fight scenes of this were so freaking good uh, that this is possibly my favorite version of Captain America and definitely my favorite fight scenes that we've seen from Captain America, just because of what they were able to do in animation. Like it just, he feels the, you know, it felt smooth, all the shield tech they were doing, all the moves, like it felt really good, man. And whoever did the like choreograph, like these fights, I wish they would come to the MCU and try to bring a little of this over because I, I thought the fight scenes were amazing. Yeah, I agree. I I kind of thought I brought it up when I was watching it uh, with with my lady. The two of us like turned to each other a couple of times watching it and just went, "Was Steve Rogers this powerful?" I'm like, "What the fuck?" Like she's flipping trucks and <laughs> you know like uh, beating up tanks and stuff, and like she, when she jumps, she looks like she's flying. And like part mm -hmm. of me, part of me is thinking like, is it just? You know the whole like anime thing like anime goes hard like you know is it, is a it kind of just um you know they can do it so they do you know they make her jump over buildings because it's easy to draw whereas in like at live action it's so much harder to do or is it like an actual like you want to break it down into an actual nerdy thing where it's like power levels and stuff and you know would she be power would she be more powerful like i was in another i was in another stream yesterday and i brought this up and like it when it drove the conversation for like 25 minutes on this big mad fucking nerd out on like uh like power levels and stuff like that it was hilarious i regret bringing it mm -hmm. up but it was very funny um but basically it's like it was it was explained very well actually um so what people are like what they're like what people are saying is potentially like so say you know steve rogers when he first got injected with the serum he was like a little wimpy five foot four kid no powers like respiratory problems everything like he was like the <clears throat> like a level one we'll say power level one like literally like nothing whereas peggy carter when she was a human she was like a fucking mi6 agent like whatever like you know she was like english special forces and she was like a pretty powerful woman to begin with then she gets the serum so it's like you know maybe she would be more powerful than steve because she was a, a better soldier, a better, like, more, like, kind of, like, I don't know. I don't, I don't know how to describe it, but, like, you know, she was a she was a stronger human before getting the serum, if that makes sense. Like, she had a, she had a stronger starting point than Steve. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. definitely. Exactly, yeah, so, like, I don't I, know, maybe that, maybe that, like, explains it, but, like, I found when I was watching it, I was like, 
why is she jumping over buildings and stuff like that? I was like, it's a bit ridiculous. Like, and I know it's a cartoon. So part of me is thinking, is it just anime going crazy or is it actually, is there a reason behind it? That's me just being too nerdy about it, I think. Yeah. I really I think, think I gave it a solid. Oh, you can go ahead. Yeah, no, Kyle. go ahead, Kyle. I was going to say, I think uh, I gave it a solid 7 out of 10. Um, I think the same reasons it didn't do better in my mind are the same reasons Drunky said where it felt rushed. And then it, I also thought to the same thing, well, if you're going to rush it that much, I thought it would have been cool to see them do a really quick, like, since the way Steve went down for a second, I thought it would have been cool to see maybe like a Winter Soldier Steve Rogers. If they're going to do everything quick I thought that's like where that, it was going. Yeah. I, thought that, I, thought I was that thinking was the same it. thing. I was hoping for that. So I was like, that's going to be so cool if they do that really quick. <laughs> yeah. And then they didn't do it. Um, so I, I think they definitely accomplished the whole uh, goal of the show, which is that what if. And it makes you think about like the what if that kept going. How does that universe look like continuing? Um, super good chemistry. Love the fact that so many of the voice actors came and um, put their time into it. And... Uh, they, I feel like you can feel them be a little bit more playful with it. Like Sebastian and Stan, uh, you, you feel him get a little bit more playful, I feel like, with his voice lines and with being in character and stuff. When mm -hmm. And I just think uh, hopefully we're going to see that throughout all the episodes with everybody doing their characters in cartoon. Maybe they're going to, you know, go out, take a little bit more risk with the way they do some of the stuff. I don't know. I liked it so far. Good starting episode. I loved um the the joke that Bucky said about like uh, Peggy nearly ripping his arm off like there was a couple of like really funny parts in it which I thought was great um <clears throat> and uh, the Hydra stomper was fantastic as well like because it was like oh, it was yeah. it was like Tony's first like it looked like Tony's first like Iron Man suit nearly like you know the helmet was the same and stuff uh, I didn't see that coming at all like so I thought that was really cool I'm not gonna um, lie though not getting the voice actor for that one dude with the bowler hat that was such an immersion breaker for me not getting the same dude and having him just be like kind of like lighthearted and not gruff sounding the dude who voiced kind of steve approach. was actually very good like he was very close to chris evans like yeah. Wait, that was, very i close. thought that was chris evans. it's not no no he wasn't in it he's no. not in it so yeah like that was that was impressive and um, i thought he sounded very like chris yeah. evans very much so. Like the guy who said, the Why guy who voiced Tony do? Stark. Well, he's out of contract with them. He's not going back now. I don't think. But I know now. You know, he's going to be coming back in the future. But I think this was during his kind of finish period. Like you know, it was after Endgame and he was done. But I think now he's going to be coming back in the future, probably for Secret Wars or something like that. But um, that's years out. So yeah. Like, um. Oh, I, go ahead. I mean, I, I I also give it maybe about a seven seven five. Um. Only because I really, I really did enjoy all the all the combat, but I also really enjoyed a lot of the, a lot of the perspective behind who Steve is as well, like as well as Peggy. So Peggy always wanted to be a, a very, a very noticed woman, uh, a very like you know brought out kind of person, recognized, and now she had the ability to do so. And Steve is still Steve. Like mm -hmm. regard whether he's whether he's Captain America, whether he's just Steve Rogers, whether he's the Hydra Stomper, mm -hmm. he's still Steve, which is like it's it's very indicative of, of of his character. And then we also see like how no matter what condition he is, Peggy and Steve are still like an item. They still yeah. care for each other. They still have feelings for each other. And I thought that was that was fantastic. Like it's no matter like it's it's this this whole idea of like no matter what happens, no matter how many different timelines go through, it seems like they're always gonna want to be together. Do, do you and, feel? Do you just on that point? Um, do you feel? Because I I kind of felt when I was watching it, and I made a joke about it while I was watching it as well. But you know, in the movie, Peggy is very much so not interested in Steve in a sexual way until he gets the serum. Like, and that is blatant. Like, you know, it's like, she's just like, kind of like, thinks he's like, kind of sweet and stuff. But it's like, she ain't going home with him. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, and then it's like, the second guy. after he gets the fucking serum, she's like, touching his abs and poking his chest and all. And then it's like, you know, she's in like, so I don't know if I truly believe that they would have been together. Personally, cause oh. I, 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 I get the vibe that like, you know, she would have friend zoned the shit out of him if he didn't have the serum. Well, it's because it's it's because of the effects of the serum, whether it affected her, whether it affected him, it does help give that uh, that conveyance of like of of that's the reason why there's so much of a rapport because you know now you know in a sense like Steve looks up to Peggy now and Steve praises Peggy for everything that she's doing, whereas like if he was Captain America, 
yeah, there's a little bit of sexual tension there, but but at the same time, like, <clears throat> I don't think she would have really gone for him if he was an arrogant asshole. Like, oh, if he was such hundred percent, and and so, and so like, I I I honestly believe though that like, although he did look muscular, he did look like the Adonis kind of man. You know, that's that's the ideal thing, and it and and you know, some people, most most people, to be honest, like are are, are infatuated with that kind of like structure. So to see that she, you know, she had that reaction, which is natural, but afterwards it's going to click off if he was, if he wasn't that like a good person, it wouldn't matter. So I really think that it's still Steve's charisma and his ability to, to talk with Peggy and, and, and have this almost innocence about him that still brings Peggy to him. Yeah. Yeah. And the like, other, I don't know. I think, I think it's all pity. <laughs> oh yeah, she 100. percent You guys like, said sorry. You both talked right over each other. I didn't hear yeah, either. Sorry about that. No, it's okay. <laughs> Repeat the both. I need to hear what both of you said. Talk <laughs> you first. Not it. I was gonna say. So what you're saying is like the serum like lowered her standards or whatever. Like she's a better person now. So she's like whatever. He's a skinny little dude. I love that shit. Yeah, we were, love that guy. <laughs> I liked him before the serum. I swear. <laughs> no, I think it's all pity at this point. Like she was like. When he when she he got shot and he's like I'm not going anywhere from that moment on she's like I'm pity hooked to you yeah, she came yeah, out yeah. of that like a Amazonian <laughs> woman that was gonna tear down the world and she's like man this could have been you sucks to suck nerd I guess I owe you <laughs> coffee uh, monkey the chat I'm gonna break this little man <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh she stopped like, she slapped yeah. in half <laughs> well even 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 before the serum though uh, you could see that she has a respect for him. Oh, yeah, because no. of his ability to, to 100%, think, so hundred percent. But I, yeah, you know, does it go the exact same way? I don't know. That's what I'm saying. I don't. Um, I, don't, I, don't I mean, know. he has his ambition, yeah. and I like I think, that's what I feel is is like is the whole thing. It's like it's Steve. It's just Steve. I think another thing that's weird is I think they set this one up kind of crappy because are you saying that that guy's not gonna do the shooting and everything if she doesn't choose to stay in the room? Like that didn't happen because she chose to stay in there. Yeah, um, I, I yeah, I, so I kind of thought the same thing. So that that whole like the way that they're trying to give like her Nexus event origin right there just didn't really make a hundred percent sense to me because it's like, okay, but does this what? How does her being there cause that to happen? Hmm. Well, like uh, in in the original and like the Captain America movie, they're all up in the room upstairs, and so like I guess they could argue that her being downstairs caused the rest of them to stay downstairs. Yeah. Um, and the guy didn't start shooting and doing his thing until like the experiment with Steve was already like taking place, right? Yeah. Um, if I remember right. Um, it, yeah, it was it was after though. Um, so he he blows the bomb after Steve comes out because he wants to see the yeah. work. Um, I think I think what they were trying to get at this is the way I thought of it. It was her staying down there kind of caused a commotion. So it was kind of like, oh, why is there a woman down here? Blah, blah, blah. And then it's like they kind of forgot then to kind of send everybody up. And it's like, just start the fucking thing. Like, you know, because there was like, yeah. there was all the kind of, you know, there was all that kind of weird shit with like, you know, the the divide between men and women in the episode, like which obviously would have taken place back then, of course. Um, of course. Yeah. And I think they, I think they were just really kind of playing on that whole aspect of it being the major what if, like, you know, that was, that was the whole kind of butterfly thing. So. You know, it's like, how, yeah. how could we give the serum to a woman and blah, blah, blah. So that and like the dude who the, the dude who pulled the trigger on on that uh, explosion, since he was close enough, I, I have the suspecting feeling that that maybe since he was close enough, he's like, well, we can destroy the experiment here and now without causing anybody to actually successfully like pass through this. Yeah. And and by doing so, like he completely destroys the project that leaves Red Skull still the 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 supreme person within you know the within the earth mm -hmm. um and able to carry out his duties without any sort of hindrance yeah i think do you guys right think that. do you guys think they're gonna reuse watcher after the series because oh, it yeah. feels like oh yeah, yeah the way they're the way they're starting and ending with that little speech i am the watcher yeah i, I cannot i will not i shall not or whatever yeah. interfere yeah, yeah. Like, did they name him heavy. Yeah, yeah, he's the they, watcher. He's the watcher. Yeah. They named him. He no, no, no. no, no. Did, did it like? Is it Uatu or is it? Oh no, they haven't named him past the watcher yet. Because uh, Uatu is the six one six watcher. So I'm assuming, uh, uh, in the show they haven't named him. Maybe in the credits, I didn't watch. 
or maybe like somewhere they've dropped it, but they in the show they don't really name who he yeah. is. He refers to himself as the Watcher. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so maybe and we'll see more as we go along, like uh, as Fe- the multiverse expands. Feige has said that there's like this this series is as relevant as Loki is as relevant as everything else. Like, you know, we're going oh, not be, really. We're yeah, we're going to be getting live action versions of some of these characters, and you know, I'm going to just guess that it's going to be peggy carter as captain carter i think Mm -hmm. captain carter goes to live action so easily and so effectively and i think that she in one episode of an animated series has already beaten sam as 100 percent thousand percent she's a better captain than him in 20 minutes 15 minutes of screen time less it's crazy. From like her attitude to the way she fights all that like she feels like a captain america uh, in ways that, and, and like, cause she comes, she's a fucking, I don't know. She, she is the right way. Like Falcon, Falcon is his own character. And he should have stayed his own character, yeah. mm-hmm. even in the comic books. Like, I don't care if the mantle's passed over. Like you're, you're destroying the character of Falcon. Who's unique in his own right. And has his own abilities and got the things he does. Yeah. And you're overlaying with this stuff and you don't give him the, the super serum, which is a defining thing about Captain America. Like the super serum, him being stronger than a normal person is like a thing about Captain America. And the, the fact that they didn't get, they didn't give uh Falcon that like just blew my mind in the show. I totally thought they were setting it up for that eventually because of the whole deal. Yeah. Um, and speaking of power levels, like I, I coming back to Finch's point, um, I would say, you know, I, I, I don't think Captain Carter is any stronger than uh, Captain America um, in any like reasonable way. I think that is just like down to animation because like in the comic books or whatever, like Captain America kind of seems like he's stronger than what he does uh, in the MCU. Yeah. Uh, and I, I would even say like, you know, can she pick up trucks or whatever, throw trucks and stop them, whatever she did. Uh, I would bring it back to like Captain America and him like stopping the helicopter from taking off. Yeah. I would assume that the, the, the force of the helicopter uh, taking off is probably heavier than the force of a like a trucker equal to that. And I think it is just animation. Like they did yeah. things that were really, really good. You know that that like felt good. Um, and if this was Cap, if they would, you know, put Captain America in this, um, he would look the same way. Like it just it looks good on screen than what they did. To truly yeah, nerd, I to think- truly nerd out though, real quick, just off the back of that. Um, like I know the Russo brothers came out and said that Captain America was a certain like level, certain training, all this sort of thing. Because you got to remember that when he got the serum, he was a nobody. He couldn't do anything. He wasn't a soldier. Mm-hmm. He had no training, nothing. That is literally everything you see in that first film is just the power of the serum. He couldn't do a push up. Like you saw his initial training, like he could do nothing. Like so, that's the power of the serum. Whereas Peggy was a fully trained like uh, mm-hmm. British fucking special agent or whatever she was and yeah. um, so you know i think her level would have been a lot higher at the beginning so i think she would have been cool at, like cool, cool, cool. better at the beginning but um i think it's it's just interesting to me because it's like you know the russos came out and said you know between him coming cool. out of the ice cool, cool, cool. and the first avengers movie and then winter soldier which we just watched last week and um, i think that he he apparently went through a shit ton of training and that's where he gets a lot of his power and you know he he grows and gets more powerful so it's like is is you know when he curls the helicopter that's kind of two years after he comes out of the ice and he's had time to kind of really adapt to the to the serum become captain america like you know Mm -hmm. and that's why that film is one of my favorite films because you can see the work that he's put in you see how he's changed he's a different cap and um, the whole stealth captain cool. is incredible. Cool, like cool. just the whole like you know he's a proper like black ops fucking special forces like motherfucker. Like you know he's amazing. Yep. Like, you know so mm-hmm. I, and I think that you know imagine cool. Captain cool, Carter. Cool. I presume if you were to put her into the same situation again, I'd be curious to see is she more powerful than him when it gets to that stage? If she has a few more years of training with the serum, does it even get more? Yeah. Out? Just like you know cool. Cool, cool, cool. I just gotta say, I mean, sorry, with- real quick. Uh, Zavin, thank you so much for the ten gifted subs, bro. Sorry, I hate. Not I, made, not I, I, I hate interrupting the the flow for the chat, but I gotta say thank you for that. That's amazing. Cool. Dude. Thank you so much. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. Oh yeah. Jump, jumping off what you guys said, I think uh, it's kind of it, it. It is just for the sake of the cartoon, because like if you transcribe the action scenes from the movies cool. directly cool, into cool, a cool. cartoon, it just doesn't hit the same. Because what makes them hit is like you know though that it's a real person doing these like cappy capybara flips and all these whatever the hell they're called capoeira, uh, capoeira. Cool. yeah cool, that, cool. that stuff those flips and stuff and you're like all right that's pretty cool yeah. but in a cartoon like seeing something just that simple you're just kind of like 
really so I, yeah. I think you do have to add the grandiose like uh she's flipping the truck she's jumping higher than we expect and it just to make it stand out in the cartoon and uh quick question do you guys is disney are disney animators working on this yes this yeah. is a, is like it's it's a I, I, I kind of, project. i appreciate the fact that they are because i think uh they're doing a really good job mm -hmm. yeah, the, the no, animation the, the color palette all of it's good i don't really watch a lot of animation like is but is it striked me as very different from stuff that I'd yeah. seen before. Thank you. So I don't it, know. Is it is it very different? Like it yeah, has like, like those those Disney outlines, like those same. It feels like the same kind of like base work that you know Disney for in the the quality. I think, but like you said, it's a little bit different. It's not it's not like too cartoony and it's not too kind of like Borderlandsy or anything like that. Like yeah. that that weird color scheme. Like they just nail it. Uh, it definitely takes place like it's all 3D animation, so it's not like hand done like that. Um, my biggest, so it looks good, and they have like really good shaders and really good coloring and color grading on this whole thing. Like it looks beautiful. I think my biggest problem with this animation would probably be that the facial animations are not that expressive. Uh, when it comes to that, that was probably my biggest issue. The faces look kind of just stiff. Uh, it, it didn't feel like it was necessarily like Disney level when it came to the faces. But I thought the coloring, I thought like the kind like the the way they framed everything, all the you know, like I said, the fight scenes and stuff were yeah. all like really high quality. And I know that Marvel is actually putting together their own animation studio now. Yeah. Where they're gonna kind of like silo them off and like do that. So like it, it, it seems like they're committed to this, like making their animators even better and giving them more tools. Hundred percent. That are just <laughs> awesome. stuff. We'll we'll look back on this in about five years time, I'd say, and we'll kind of be like, Jesus, look at how shit the animation was in the first season. What if, like, because yeah. I oh yeah, all the improvements are gonna come. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Like, I, and they they have said that this is the the kind of launch of a, a, an entire division of like Marvel's, like sorry, Marvel Studios uh, animation. So it's not like stuff that's yeah. gonna be it's stuff can... directly connected to the MCU. So like Feige's hundred percent behind this. I, I love it. In man. my I, mind, is they can it. do like one to one to three seasons on actual what if stuff that's been given by Marvel, and then I feel like they could even not even do full three seasons. I feel like they should start sprinkling in their own what ifs, like yeah. because that's the whole point of what if is like you kind of like what we were talking about how DC lets so many people have their go at a Batman story or have their go at this story. Exactly, dude. this is that's kind of what like Marvel was doing with that, and they can continue to do that and let some of these newer younger writers come up with new ideas and stuff where i <laughs> where i think Mar where i think this will shine will be for the example like i've seen a lot of people talk online like everybody wants the steve rogers return of the stone story like you're not gonna mm -hmm. get you're probably not gonna get chris evans to do that right but people like a lot of people are saying throw it on disney plus as an animated series for six episodes one episode per stone and you can do whatever the fuck you want you know what i mean like it's just it's you know, in He's animation it's exactly in animation it's mm -hmm. the it's it's at, well not effortless but like you know it's you know it, you have full reign to do whatever you want basically so mm -hmm. i i think that's an absolute winner you could start doing um tv series in animation that like link the movies together do you know what i mean instead of doing like something like loki you could like do an animated series for half the price and put it out twice as quick and have something that would connect say i don't know like um like hawkeye and fucking like i don't know uh, she hulk or something like that like you know you just mm -hmm. continue the stories in animation and i think it's just easy wins and even to take it one step further again uh, imagine they did something like where they actually bring out a Spider-Man video game that actually links into the MCU when you play as Tom Holland. Mm -hmm. like that's that's what they really need to look into because I think that's such a it's such an exciting medium I think and a, and a really exciting crossover. Like I love the way Star Wars have done it with Fallen Order. It's probably one of the best Star Wars games I've ever played in my life, and yeah. it's gonna be in the future linked directly into live live action because you're gonna get like your man Cal Kestis is gonna show up somewhere whether it's in um you know uh, an ahsoka show or something like that he's gonna he's gonna arrive somewhere in live action you, you just know it and uh it's just there's a ea announced this week that they're, they've got plans for two more games of that as well so you know the future's bright there so if they start crossing all over that him into live action and then bring him back for a fucking game imagine the immersion <laughs> then like, that's exciting insane dude 
Like that's the that year. was my that's favorite game of 2019. It was easily. it was beautiful. Easily the best beautiful. game of that year. Absolutely beautiful. I loved every second of it. Hundred percent. Except for um, the first time you try to fight that first boss, that's way overly scaled hard on the first planet, and he beats the shit out of you every time, like fifteen times. You guys know the boss. Yeah, the the first track, track, well, okay. There's always bits yeah, all right, dude. I was there. There's always bits. Never played it. There's always bits. Of, oh, Jesus, Alex, you got to play that game. Bro. I knew, you I knew, know, saying that. Gotta, bro. <laughs> gotta play that game. <laughs> Buy it on Epic. I think uh, creators get like twenty percent. Creator code drunk. It's got that same feeling you get. I don't know if you ever played the Metroid games growing up, but like you'll be in areas and you'll be like, "Can I get this right now, or do I need to upgrade yeah, and come back?" Yeah. You'll try for like yeah. twenty minutes to do something, and then you're like. Oh, I, I don't I have can. double jump yet. I oh. can't go up there. Yeah. <laughs> that annoys it, me it, so much. It, it's <laughs> funny. It didn't, it didn't change it. I tried the shit out of getting it before. I'm like, I'm going to try to get it now. Bro, and it's, I, I it's funny that you mentioned that. It's totally funny because I was watching Drunky play Death Store and I literally texted, uh, like, told him in chat, like, you know, it's it's amazing how when you get an item and that that wonderful feeling of like, man, I really could have used this a long time ago, but it's yeah. it's because of the mechanics of the game that it's like, you can't have this just yet. Otherwise yeah. you'd be able to do everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, it's just that, it's just that nice little mechanic that, that makes you want to go back. It's, it's great yep. for backtracking and it, and it makes you enjoy the world even more. So have you yeah. ever gone back and done a game? You know, they, they do that a game plus now on a lot of these games, story mode games. I've never actually mm -hmm. gone back and yeah. done a game again new with all the powers. Yeah, new game plus. Oh, yeah. Fun. So like I know Fallen Order has it, and I presume if you start playing the storyline again, when you're on the first planet, I presume you'll have all your powers. So I presume you just absolutely like speed run through it and just yeah. unlock, well, unlock they, everything. They, they scale the well, they scale the enemies too, which is what makes it fun. Yeah, when I you think new I think game so. plus is like you start out on a new game, but the enemies they see what where your power level is at. And yeah. then they start the base level enemies there, yeah. Yeah. and then the rest of the game's already scaled for you. Ooh. Yeah, that would be interesting. Um, because I know Drunky, you played that on master level, right? Yeah, yeah. So I am like, a Jedi where, master, my friend. Where does that? Where does it go for Drunky if he starts the game? Like <laughs> Grandmaster, Jedi ghost, uh, actually, ghost, 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 ghost just, Jedi. Yeah, he just turns into a Jedi apparition. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. Yo, Max Luthers in the chat. What's up, dude? Hey, how's it going, Max? Difficulty is called uh, Grogu, actually. Grogu? Did Grogu. You see, <laughs> I think I talked about this last week or the week before. I don't know if Drunky was here. Um, did you see that official, officially licensed um, Lucasfilm poster that they released of Luke holding Grogu with the, the lightsaber in the air? And yeah, the yellow, yeah, the yellow crystal? Holy... Yeah, That's... he's like assembling it, and you yeah. see the yellow the crystal. Yellow crystal. So Grogu is going to have a fucking yellow lightsaber in Mando 3, guaranteed. He's just gonna show up and save the day with his yellow lightsaber. Yeah, he won't even hold it. It'll just be like floating around. He'll be like Yandu and thing. Yeah. It'll just be like doo, 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 just go around, just <laughs> slice the <laughs> people up. <laughs> it's like dark as hell in a room. Yeah, <laughs> just sparks up like two feet above the ground. It's yellow. He's like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh, what is, is that? A glow if, stick? How and then it just some of the scenes in What If, man. Like, I wish they could do this stuff in live action. I hope they find a way because the scene where. Um, Captain Carter and uh, Steve Rogers were flying through the air, and she like she went into the actual plane, bro. I don't think I've seen a scene in the MCU that got me that excited in forever, man. Like I was just like like holding the seat, like oh my god, like this is rad, man. We need this. Yeah, I literally got up a couple times and was like, yes, yes, let's go. Even, the fact, let's that, like, go. The high, even the fact that the Hydra Stomper had the handle for that purpose, I was like, yeah. it's even yes. handle. Yes. Oh. She like, man, she go, she like pulls up the shield to make sure the the propeller blades don't hit her, and just like, yeah. I was like, he's dead, they're dead, they're dead. Did yeah. you guys watch Dude. Carter's show, Agent Carter? Did you watch that? I did not. No. Would you watch it now? Curiously enough. Mm. I don't. Think so not just when she got the power. Well, she's not gonna have the powers, obviously, but like it's the beginning nope. of Shield nope. and stuff. It's it's a good story. Like it's actually quite good. Um, now that she... I know what she can be, I don't <laughs> yeah. want to see what she was. You know, yeah. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. it really does make it difficult. Yeah, I just I don't know, man. Like it's an ABC show. I don't I don't like network television in the slightest. Yeah, uh, so it'd be really hard for me to watch it. I think. It does have a bit of a, it does have a bit of an ABC it. feel to it, all right. But it's not. It's, it's actually not too bad. Like it's very watchable. Um, like mm -hmm. it would be on a higher caliber than like Agents of Shield for sure. And yeah. it would be maybe 
kind of similar similar level to like maybe like you know the start of some of the cw shows because you know the way the cw shows always start off really well and then they lose their writers and then that's it it's all over but I, I, yeah. I, I think it's worth the watch like you get to you get to meet the original Jarvis like you see a lot more Howard when he's young and stuff like it's it's cool like it's really cool um, yeah yeah but and like there's not a would, mad amount would, of action in it either like so it's, it's I would watch a young Howard Stark show honestly I, I'm I surprised he did, like I'm surprised he didn't get one because he was a he was a big enough actor the dude who plays him and they could they got him for like the Carter show and stuff like that so I'm like it, like it made sense to me that there would be a show for him but again this could be where you go now in animation do you know what i mean you hire the actor for three days have him in a have him in an audio boot for three days recording lines and then he's done or you do even better you do a fucking brendan fraser like he was sitting at home with his iphone recording shit for doom patrol <laughs> he's literally sat on his ass in his house and recorded all his shit for doom patrol like it's it's a new world <laughs> it's a new mm -hmm. world I hope. That, I mean, I I love that they're bringing some of the voice actors over, but I'll be honest with you, man. I thought a couple of the voice actors in this like just did not live up to what voice acting can do, and it felt like very hollow. And uh, I I don't know if it's like a COVID stuff and they don't got home studio, whatever. Whatever. It's it its is. own profession, dude. Like it it a hundred percent is. Like you know, some I, people I, have I, it and some people don't. Actor. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah yeah you'll see like I speaking on that you saying some people have it, some people don't. I was just randomly watching this clip last night. Where I guess there was this chick that's big in anime in the like voice acting world for anime. And she's like, Oh, you mean these characters? And you literally watch her yeah. go in a different, like, slight tone yeah. and dialect for like and it's a nine different, different characters. And yeah. you're just like she does like a couple boys, <laughs> she does like all these other girl characters, and you're just like, see, that's a voice actor. And yeah, that's... what what Drunky's saying is you can hear a couple people of these talk and you know that they they're they're not that. They yeah. they don't have that capability. And well, the, the funny thing about that is like when when it comes to voice acting and the speed of this episode, it doesn't mix because if you if you listen to Dominic Cooper playing as as Howard Stark, you can clearly hear, hear his original accent mm. like kind of seeping in because he's trying to talk so freaking fast. Yeah. And it's yeah. it's not like you're supposed to elongate it. That it makes it easier for them to to convey that other accent that they're not used to. But when it's like so. Yeah, when it's so quick though, like I could clearly hear, like, oh yeah, that's Dominic Cooper. Like, that's I, a good I, connection. I felt like they needed to get, they had to pack a two-hour movie into thirty minutes because they just for some reason felt like they had to retell the entirety of Captain America, which I don't really think they had to go through. Yeah, all the steps. You know, what I mean, I, they they could have left a couple of scenes out. My Especially the my, one girlfriend, of, my uh, girlfriend made that exact point, Rookie. Um, it was kind of yeah, like, like, why you. are we watching this again? We already know the story. And it's like, yeah. is it an easy win for them? Because it's just like, you know, we're just rehashing everything we've already told, but like just yeah. changing it ever so slightly. It's like, you know, do a bit more with the butterfly effect, I think. Like, you know, don't have it being like the exact same fucking thing, but it's just as like, you I know, you're wanted... looking at Peggy instead of Steve. Like, you know, I think it would mm -hmm. obviously go a very different route. I got the, the feeling that they wanted a pat on the back because, like, I remember being sitting there going, like, wow, that looks exactly the way it did in the movie. I think they just wanted a pat on the back to be like, look, we can transcribe IRL to animation perfectly. Yeah. Which mm -hmm. I feel like it, that anybody can do that. It's like doing the opposite of that that's impressive, turning animation into IRL, which is, you're like, oh, that's cool. I, I expect you to be able to take uh, an apple and animate it. Like, that's yeah. the point of animation. You take mm -hmm. things from real life and you animate it. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. And, I don't know. I, I it was going so fast. I really thought they were just trying to get through Captain America's story really quickly, so that on the at and like you know halfway through we get into like this whole new story that we didn't know. It was just supposed to be like a quick recap. Um, so I, I really felt like they shot themselves in the foot trying to do too much. I mean, we could have very easily done something else. Um, because it was good to see. I loved it. I love the action. I, I, I don't know. I, I feel like I'm just grasping at straws yeah. for this one, like a little bit, because I really didn't love it. But they really, I think, you know, made the episode feel a lot worse than it should have just because of the speed at which they were trying to get through all the scenes. And if they would have cut, like, honestly, this thing could have been five, just like five minutes longer and just gave, a, you know, a little bit more time in each dialogue, like, you know, an extra second here, an extra beat there, and it would change it completely. And I, I don't know why they felt like it had to be the tightest. It, it felt like I was sitting down to watch a, a, a show that my niece watches or something where it's like always going like this so you don't mm -hmm. lose attention. I agree a hundred percent. I I told this to my girlfriend as well. I said, look, like, had it been just like maybe five, ten minutes longer, like this would have been perfect. Like they could have elongated a couple things. They could have made things a little more uh, sentimental at times. Give us a more of a conveyance of like, 
you know, like really appreciating the fact that like we get to see a different Captain America and and showing like showing off all the moves was fantastic, but like I just needed a little bit more. Just a little bit more. Yeah. Okay. I'm trying to find out who yeah, vo who voiced um the red skull in it because i thought he was very yeah, good definitely wasn't the same one uh but i love i love that actor though like i love hugo this. even i was only watching yeah. the last matrix movie and i was just like what a legend dude like he's such a, exactly he's so, he's so he's good in that every, film and like he's in matrix lord of the rings the yeah. mcu like mm -hmm. what what oh, can't he do yeah did you but, do you guys know why he doesn't want to be he, he <laughs> wasn't in endgame and i'm like if you can't get him into endgame you're not getting him into an animated show well, do you guys know why he's he's not in there? Mm -mm. Because he hated it. Uh oh, oh yeah, he hated okay. he hated being Red Skull. Oh wow! Oh really? Oh, yeah. He didn't want to he didn't want to do it again, and so he backed out. That makes me. Sad. Do you think he needed the prosthetics or whatever? Yeah, I believe a hundred percent it's that because yeah, that I looks horrible. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't <laughs> it's know. So I hard. Think he's, maybe he's just like, hey, I'm a, I'm one of those MFs that are known for their face, and you're ruining it. Come on, right? Man. And now it's I like, agree with that. And now it's like, you know, you can just do the prosthetics uh, to make it look exactly like him, just with a different actor. And then they've got voice guys, as we've seen in What If, that sound exactly like him. So, you know, now name. it's like, now you don't have to pay him. So, you know, it's his, yeah, loss, it's his loss completely. I think he's getting paid. I think uh, if you're, you're paying for his likeness. Yeah, his likeness well, is awesome, I don't know, I, think. Like, I, I heard a fucking story your, this week. Your likeness is huge. And those Hollywood contracts are all about that, like using your likeness. Well, like they just can't maybe that's why he didn't want to do it. In these because... animated films, they have to have them under contract for licensing their look, uh, what they look like. Yeah. Maybe that's why he didn't like it though, is because there really isn't a likeness of him as Red Skull. That's the maybe that's why he didn't like being Red Skull is because anybody could be under those prosthetics, and nobody you don't necessarily know it's this actor. Maybe they should have done sure. more. Um, I think maybe to keep him or keep him happy or whatever. I think they should have done more scenes with him with the mask on and uh, you know as himself you know because mm -hmm. i actually prefer when he's himself rather than with the mask off you yeah. know i think i think that hits a lot harder and then maybe that's just because i love the actor so much but uh yeah i don't back, know uh, I, I think back with back him sitting his... go ahead Carl. i was gonna say what we were saying a minute ago are we worried <laughs> that this is going to be a problem for every episode with this uh hey we're going to catch you up really quick on what the what all of Doctor Strange is about, and now we're going to do our what if. Do you think this is something that we're going to have to look out for each week I, now? I, th or? I think maybe, because the fact that it's, we know it's meant to be 10 episodes, it was dropped down to 9 because they've confirmed it's going to be a second season, so there's another 9 episodes coming. I think it's very mm -hmm. likely that a few of the stories that Captain Carter will transfer over to season 2, maybe the, obviously the T'Challa one probably won't, because obviously they've recorded what they had with Chadwick before he passed, and I don't think that they will you know do anything to replace them because they've said that they won't in live action and i can imagine that they won't in in um mm. in this either but um yeah like i don't know like it, there's a few like really big actors in there and like they don't really seem to have that much to do like they had jeremy renner in to do hawkeye which i thought in that first episode was absolutely pointless i think he said two <laughs> words you know what i mean it's like why are you paying him to come in and say two words like you know yeah and, and like, i just like you know I think it, a lot of the audio you could have potentially even just pulled it from one of the movies and just thrown their faces over them in animation and just paid them for their likeness or whatever. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I think I think like I think it's been confirmed we're getting more Captain Carter anyway. So I presume what's going to happen there is we'll get kind of the intros or the recaps or whatever you want to call it, um, and then maybe there'll be more episodes in season two or something like that. I, I, I don't know. I, I mean, th there was deviation. It just there is. it just wasn't grand. Yeah. It just wasn't grand enough. Um, like the, you know, the train when, when you guys mentioned like him, uh, Sebastian Stan getting grabbed by the arm, yeah. pulled up and he's like, you almost took my arm off. That's, that's that was, a major that deviation. Fantastic. Well, yeah, there's yeah. no, I, that was one of the first things I thought when I watched it, I was like, there is no winter soldier now because yeah. Buc Bucky never became the winter. So in this universe, there's no winter soldier. Mm -hmm. And, and, I mean, that's massive. and yeah, that is I'm massive. Like, that's end of it, right? Sorry. I'm sorry. Did Steve's character get like disappeared at the very end of it? Or no, was he left there. He no, because the one part is... that we thought he like went down and oh, he, yeah. they were like, "Oh, that the Hydra Stomper really is undestructible." Okay. Yeah, yeah, I've been the very end. He's still alive. Mm -hmm. I think Steve's still alive, yeah. but um, Carter goes to the future. So, 
And I yeah. presume I mean, where her story will continue, she'll form the, the new Avengers. Because I think we didn't we see that in a clip anyway. There's a clip where you see Gamora and stuff. So they do the the in one of the trailers. There's a clip where they they do the battle for New York, um, but they change it. So like T'Challa is there. I presume this is going to be like one of the final episodes of the season. They'll do uh-huh. Avengers one, uh, retold. So they've got like T'Challa there, and they've got um, uh, P- Captain Carter. So I think they'll do like a retelling of the first Avengers movie, just with a bunch of different people. So I think um, uh, Killmonger's there I'm as well. I'm assuming she's gonna get plucked out of this universe, though. To be honest with you, uh, just because like all the other people they're bringing in, like how are they gonna do zombies in this universe? You know what I mean? Well, I think. Mm-hmm. Well, I my understanding was that each episode was gonna be a different universe. Um, yeah. And then I think what might happen is we'll see. A couple of characters maybe get dropped into the 616 at the end of it mm-hmm. and then that's where they'll arrive in doctor strange 2 or something like that was uh was michael b jordan uh confirmed to be a voice he is killmonger in it yeah 100 okay so can we possibly theorize that you know the possibility of him coming back as I like, like the good yeah the, you know the good black panther because because be i remember next... we were talking about that yeah he could be the next Black Panther. I think that makes sense because it's all connected. Well, it shows, yeah, I mean, it shows him the the one thing that we got of him showing up was him like walking away with Stark. So mm-hmm. yeah, but, but I really do like that, the way in that clip as well. Sorry that you that I was talking about where you see them okay. all in the um, the Avengers setting. He's there and he's in the Black Panther uniform, like so. He is the Black Panther at that point. Oh yeah, confirmed. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 but I really do like how they. Um, I was thinking, like how they were gonna do it because, like, obviously he gets put on ice uh, at the end, and I was like, how how are they uh, gonna do her like put on ice type thing? And I love the they did it really seamlessly, effortlessly. In my opinion. oh yeah, and isn't the, like that could have been the big lobster monster or whatever? What's it called? Um, what's the name of it again? Oh, God. like they're they're trying to say it's Shumagorath? Yeah, and he he's that's confirmed for Multiverse of Madness as well. So again, it's more connective tissue to the live action. So yeah, um, that makes sense because Shuma tends to affect the uh, the multiverse. Um, and it, but it's it's hard to tell because like you see like kind of the crack in the crack in mouth, and I'm like I don't know like is is this maybe just an offspring or maybe just some other yeah. like a cousin of of Shuma yeah. and yeah yeah yeah. It's it's just a weird kind of setting, True. but I get it. Um, also seeing Red Skull get like demolished in oh, one that shot, was brilliant. <laughs> it was. Well, like a part of me was like, no. was like, come on, man! I thought he had the super soldier serum in as well in him as well. Like he had True. just like the the deviated one, True. which caused him, you know, to you his whole yeah. 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 And so I was like, how do you kill him immediately? <laughs> like you well, see Carter, you see Carter going ham, but then again, she has the shield, which is damn near indestructible. So I don't know. And the sword, which looks amazing, bro. Sort like I'm really hoping sword, that that's actually yeah. the sort of might. Mm. That's the the one that is going to be in Eternals, right? I think so. Yeah. Um, Coffee Monk in the chat. If there is no Winter Soldier, is T'Challa's dad still the Panther? And that makes that's yeah, because he he never would have died. But I think he had handed over the mantle to T'Challa before he yeah. died, right? So T'Challa yeah. was still yeah. the Panther because I think he just got too old. But I like I like the training. I like the train of thought though. Um, but I, in this, you know, T'Challa gets taken in this multiverse or whatever. Like he's gonna be in the Guardians of the Galaxy, right? Like he's yeah. he gets taken away. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah. So he he's Star Lord in this or in that version. Yeah. But are we talking about Peggy's universe because that's gonna be a different universe again? It all gets very yeah. confusing. Like this is gonna get weird. Yeah, it's gonna get so <laughs> so weird. Um, one theory I have though for the fact that we don't have Bucky as the Winter Soldier. It, it's no i mean who's to say that that they don't capture the hydra stomper later yeah pull pull steve out and make him the winter soldier yeah yeah i, because, I think they could very easily make him the winter Mental soldier like you know just subscribed a little twist here little twist there without even needing to show it on screen mm-hmm. maybe because he lost peggy he went down like a darker path you know some you know uh, whatever yeah. i love that that would be great yeah. yeah that would be great um and i think that's a very obvious kind of storyline but it's what mm-hmm. i want to see <laughs> you know like I, sometimes the obvious is the right way to go you know i think in some cases like even even the slightest deviation although it caused this whole different chain 
in some cases, some universes actually still fulminate back into like the original, but with like different characters being represented. Winter Soldier, Winter Steve, Winter Steve versus Captain Carter. <laughs> Winter <laughs> Steve. <laughs> Winter if Steve, Winter Steve, Steve, I'm mad. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking love it. I love it. There's your, there's your season two opener episode there, right there. Winter That's Steve, Winter Steve, yeah. <laughs> Captain Carter, and the Winter Steve. <laughs> <laughs> I can do this all day. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I know. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, like this, you know, I, I love the concept of what if because it has it gets us talking about so many fucking possi possibilities and scenarios. And stuff. Yeah, like it's 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 fantastic. Like, um, I've, also I've, from, sorry, uh, also from one of the perspectives, I think there might be a what if of uh, Vision where like what if he managed to take the stone out before Thanos arrived? Because mm, it, I believe there's there's like a little snippet. It looks like he's. Like getting ready to pull oh, the, yeah, yeah. he's, pull he's it extracting out. it himself. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Like I just. Be... Yeah. Like I, I. I. I don't really. I'm not. I'm trying not to read up too much about it. I don't want too much of it to be spoiled because mm -hmm. I think yeah. going into the episodes knowing what's going to happen, I think kind of is ruining it a bit for me. Like because you know, I wasn't really surprised by anything we saw in that episode at all, just because we. Like we kind of knew exactly where it was going to go. Yeah, we were. Yeah, but they you they did be show by these things. Mm -hmm. Definitely, but uh, what they did have was homages. So like at the end when Carter shows up through the through the portal, you see the same um, kind of scene as you saw in the first Avengers, where you know they're like, "Man, put the sword down." Yeah. But in in the Avengers movie, it's Loki coming through the portal, and they're like, "Sir, put yeah. the scepter down." Yeah. yeah. It's like sure. crazy. Yeah, it's cool. I uh, I really want to get my train of thought back that I lost. <laughs> oh, I take things. your time, sir. Take your time. <laughs> I don't know. Must not have been important. Yeah, we were <laughs> copy <laughs> monk. We were talking <laughs> about Gorath. Yeah. Like I presume it's gonna link into. Oh yeah. Doctor Strange too. So. What I was going to say is that I think the only thing like prep work I think I'm going to do for this show is I have a video that I have like on watch later on my YouTube. You muted there. Oh, I think you muted. <laughs> and you I did. deafen myself. I hate my life. <laughs> bro. The only uh, thing Take that two. I really want to do is watch this video uh, about the watcher that kind of explains his origin and what he's all about. Um, that's the only thing I have, like, as far as studying for this show. Other than that, uh, like Fento said, I kind of want to get surprised, even though my favorite, like, one, some of my favorite stuff that I already know is coming has been spoiled, like, Spider-Man is Doctor Strange. is just going to be fucking cool. Yeah. Yeah. Did you but see other than that, I saw I'm some, not doing too much. I saw somebody uh, kind of connected the two, because you know the way in um, Into the Spider-Verse, when he's, like, when Miles is picking out his suit, uh, Peter B. Parker's like, no, Spider-Man doesn't wear capes, and then it like cuts to the to what if, and he has the cape like the Sorcerer Supreme. I'm like, <laughs> I thought that was very funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I I really like the speculation that we're having per episode. Um, I do want to like, I do do my best to shut my brain off the first time I watch it, and then rewatch it and just analyze it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah, I'll tell you this. Um, this is the first Marvel TV show that I'm like. Okay, this is nice. First yeah. episode, I'm in. I'm down. I'm, I'm, I'm sold on what they're trying to do. I'm sold on what they're trying to tell me. Yeah. Um. So, like, this is the best Disney Plus Marvel I've seen yet. <laughs> I know that. Like, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry, but like, well, it, it helps that it's animated because then there's very little limitations. True. True. But look, yeah, what, and look it's what, also not. Look what I was oh, going to say. I was going to say. Go ahead, go on. Go on. Damn it. <laughs> Dude, I am on a roll today. I was just going to say, uh, they're also not trying to set up a show that's uh, going to get, like, everything else we've seen has been, they're trying to tell a story through multiple episodes. And I think, like, that's what most of our problems was, was, like, they took this out of the story and they're telling the story this way and it's kind of like their pacing's bad on this, which st yeah. their pacing is still bad on this, but we only have to deal with their pacing over one episode. Yeah. And now we're going to have to deal with pacing next episode, but at least we're not, like... The whole season's not going to get messed up by them trying to, you know, fit yeah. it all mm -hmm. together like a puzzle. 
As far as I know, they're one shots. Like each episode is a one shot, but some of the characters will transfer over. So, but I think you're right in what you're saying. I think it's very much like episode one, Captain Carter. Episode two, Star Lord T'Challa, like or whatever, you know. So I think it's um, yeah. It's very much like each episode is its own movie, sort of. Um, and then there'll be like a kind of crossover, like Avengers event at the end of the season. That's what I'm gathering. I think Marvel just doesn't grasp very well how to tell a story through a. Uh series episodic style no. as opposed to the movies like if you look at what their netflix properties were before disney plus came out like it just that with the exception of a few like daredevil and stuff like that feels like they really struggle with doing it in this longer format like they're they can nail it if they could have your attention for two hours or if they can have your attention for 30 minutes but trying to get your attention for 45 minutes repeatedly over and over and string that all together it's like that's where it's they're dying out on yeah it's, yeah. Tough. it's tough bro like and i think yeah. um i gotta give props when you talk about stuff like that i gotta give props to, like the first two seasons of arrow on the cw like and the first two seasons of the flash like those are like 44 episodes of like hour-long tv and they worked and they were good and i think what like worked for arrow was they had like all the flashback sequences to when he was stuck on the island and then it kind of bounced back between that and the current times so like it kind of you weren't just bored watching like one like an hour long episode of one storyline it was always bouncing back to how he got onto the island and how he got off and how he got his training and all that sort of thing so it's like yeah i don't know how like i don't know how like marvel would do trying to do that like trying to do 44 episodes of tv over two years like i think they fail miserably at it <laughs> to be honest like because you know Probably. they do they do six and they can't really do that properly yeah Meech could talk to you about the flash Meech stuck with the flash like four seasons past when i stopped watching i was like yeah the flash is so bad nope, now, though. i can't, can't I, and like i love the flash <laughs> so much but i can't even watch it anymore and i watched it probably three seasons too too long like but like the last season yeah. I, I saw images from the season finale and i was like oh i'm gonna jump back in it because jordan fisher's in it now he's playing bart allen and i'm like fucking that's so cool there's like a twitch streamer like in a fucking show that i watch i was like i'm definitely gonna watch it again and i just can't it's so fucking awful like i, I like oh, there's an there's a scene in the last episode where they're like using lightning bolts and they're using them it looks like they're using them as lightsabers or some shit i'm like i can't even fucking look at it i, I looked at uh, one still picture of it and i'm like i can't even watch that like that will that will make me so angry like they're using like <laughs> lightning rods as like weapons i'm like for fuck sake like <laughs> keep lightsabers in my star wars universe oh Dude, jesus the work is the fans you try to defend it like oh well, you obviously haven't read the comic books where yeah. they were able to do that i'm like bro not every comic book issue was good all right leave it yeah. alone like yeah yeah, yeah. yeah they, like, damn, you can't justify them doing something in 1987 for one issue like you know that it's gonna work in live action mm -hmm. on a tv series like it's just sometimes it's just yeah. fucking awful like now like i love the first three seasons of both of those shows they're fantastic and when they started doing the crossovers it really worked at the start because like you're like holy shit the flash is on arrow this week and arrows in the flash and it was deadly like it was a like, proper like tv events and they were like it was i got ex as excited about that stuff as i did about marvel movies coming out in the cinema that's how good it was at the start but it just mm. it got so bad they just went too far mm. when, when they started bringing out legends of tomorrow and supergirl and stuff and then they had like five shows crossing over i'm like this is a bit ridiculous yeah, they were going ham. That's yeah. why she kept watching Flash because she was watching Supergirl too, and then yeah. she heard more crossover, and she was like, "Yeah,", yeah. and I was like, "No, Earth, fuck off." Yeah, they that's did. what Earth, I'm going Earth to do. They did a big, they did a big massive crossover event for Steve and Amel's, the guy who played Arrow, his exit out of the show, um, and it was cool. But he said that like I was listening to him talk he about it in a in a podcast after the fact, and he was saying that. It got so hectic with timing and schedules and all this sort of shit and crossovers between like contracts to be on one set and one show and you know so he was saying that he actually shot his last scene in the show he was in it for eight years and the last scene that he shot he had to shoot it on green screen by himself and nobody else was in the room and they edited people in after because it was a crossover uh in contracts and um the girl who plays like sarah lance she had been working for like 14 15 hours that day already and she couldn't work anymore and he literally had Jesus. to come in shoot his last scene by himself 
and then fuck off and he was like it was just such a shit ending to a show that changed oh, my man. life like it's just awful <laughs> that's it's heartbreaking like, he loved that role yeah like, he didn't he, he would have kept playing arrow forever if they would have let him i know i kind of wish he did now because there's a real likelihood that you could see him go into like a movie role now with everything that's going on because you know they're bringing grant gustin into the flash movie and stuff so i think like they could have easily like brought him into a movie role now and i'm just kind of like oh shit like you know he kind of if they try to replace him they're gonna get backlash i, th I think he did that part i so think charlie well that... i think your man who played uh you know charlie hunnam he's 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 down apparently to play him and yeah. i he's the only yeah. guy who i would actually say yeah he fits the role like he's he, he's a cool fucking dude he was in the main oh, guy... i love that dude yeah the, uh, ma the, the main dude. guy from uh sons of anarchy yes yeah yeah sam crow so I, 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 I think though. he I think he's I really good. He doesn't have he doesn't I don't know. I just <laughs> think I, I don't know. I, the Arrow was one of the first shows like in all of this that I actually got into. Yeah. I mean obviously the MCU is different, but like as far as like actual shows and doing the weekly episodic stuff, yeah. I got into Arrow and loved it and just yeah. remember like waiting the entire first season to be like, what the fuck happened on this island, bro? Like yeah all that stuff and yeah, it was cool like you said i was so hyped because i was into early flash too and they did it so proper back then you're like you're like oh wait yeah. he's here and uh, he they just yeah. yeah but then again uh, then like it goes down the, the same road that all these shows go down like where the writing just gets lazy and poor and like they did a thing at the end of season four where they turned they changed the whole story of the show so it turned out that he actually got off the island during his five years on it and he was like doing like a double agent shit for argus and stuff and i'm just like hang on a second and then i was like how like because it catches up to the first episode to the pilot and it's like he'd been like a soldier or some shit and he had like like he was bald and all and i'm like hang on a second because it's like when he gets picked up he's like all hairy and stuff as if he's been there for five years turns yeah. out like he was wearing a wig the whole time i'm like no bro you just ruined everything like <laughs> it's like this is just <laughs> awful dude I was so upset with that shit. No, I actually have a wig that makes me look homeless. Don't yeah, it's like, it. but imagine like doctors picking him up on a boat and all. It's like, hang on, why is this guy wearing a fucking wig and a fake beard? Like, what the hell's going on? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. Uh, should we talk about Suicide Squad? Um, yeah, I don't mind. We can jump into, we're already kind of talking about DC stuff, so why not? Um, yeah, round table, Suicide Squad, Drunky, drunky. go. I gotta hear how Drunky how he feels about it now. Uh, I actually, dude, I, I really enjoyed the Suicide Squad. Um, this movie, like, is probably a solid 8 out of 10 for me. I haven't seen it in the cinema, uh, so I've only seen it in the, uh, at home, whatever. But I, I thought this was a really great superhero movie, or supervillain movie, right? Um, where it took a lot of risks, and they did a lot of really fun scenes, a lot of things that really we haven't seen in superhero movies. Uh, I was talking about this, uh, earlier today, but it was like, you know so many uh, MCU movies and superhero stuff, they just have gotten so paint by numbers where Black Widow just felt like we knew everything that was going to happen. They filled in the beats. Yeah. Uh, whereas Suicide Squad like felt completely different and felt like it was breaking the mold on the superhero genre and trying to go places that they really hadn't been before um, while at the same time really reviving the and saving the characters from the original Suicide Squad and doing them better than uh, that movie did them at all. Um, you know, really honoring kind of birds of prey is, and giving Harley Quinn a great moment that kind of felt like that movie too. Like James Gunn pulled so many elements from previous movies into this one and made them extraordinary. Uh, I, I thought it was a great movie, man. I thought eight out of 10, um, you know, the first time I watched it, I was like, eh, it's pretty good. And then the second time I watched it, I liked it even more. Um, I think if people go back and view it again, they're going to, they're going to have the same experience. Um, it, it's a solid movie, eight out of 10 for me. Yeah, I gotta agree. With I would say, saying, Go ahead, yeah, go. solid eight out of ten. Uh, the best way I can put it, uh, I think I said, I told Drunky in his chat the other day was, the problem with the first one is they try to take themselves way too serious on the first Suicide Squad, and I feel like it, they came in with this one and did the exact opposite. You can tell they don't take themselves serious at all in this movie, and it just works. It works for what the Suicide Squad is like. The idea of these people that are going out there with bombs implanted in their head and they're already criminals who don't like following the rules like the way they made it to like they made it fun and um they made it to where you weren't just like waiting for a big bad you like you, you didn't know what the hell was going to happen in that movie nothing there was no like predictability which i love that yeah uh i i give it a seven um mm -hmm. 
I I enjoyed the movie. I had fun with it. But the one big detriment that kept like crossing my mind that kept bugging me was the fact that like all their animal based villains were kept to the side. And and I know that seems like a very small detail, but you literally have a person on your squad who is a shark who sh who has human intelligence in the comics, who can speak, who can read. And they literally turned in backwards and said he can't speak well and he can't read. Yeah. And 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 the the part that bugged me the most was the fact that they turned that they they really showcased that showcased this as a this is a humans only movie the animals need to sit out the animals need to sit outside they need to wait until destruction happens and then the animals can run in and it bugged me so much like like during during the bar scene like king shark was sitting out there yeah during during the start of, during the start of the show but if weasel weasel died yeah. and like it like it's like why can't you uh, accept that like these animal characters are actually pretty damn cool when they walk into the mm -hmm. scene and when they have things that they need to say like weasel's way more cool like way more cool in the comics than he is than he is in here they just made him a literal like idiot uh -huh. and 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 so like this like i said this is the biggest this is the biggest part that like ruined it for me but other than that the show was fun it was fantastic all the fight scenes were were enjoyable the the tidbit between Bloodsport and Peacekeeper was was yeah. really fun. Like that, like all those moments, and then like understanding that they're also villains, so like they don't eat, they shoot first, ask questions later kind of situation, oh, yeah. which is really awesome. Um, and but also like another another huge problem is the like they took all these nice names, all these good all these good like soldiers that they could have used for like later on in the show and killed them off like one by one as like as the show progressed but no they took this entire squad of names they're like here here's all the names here's everybody that you know and everybody that you love especially if you read the comics yeah boom they're all dead yeah that like even 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 captain boomerang i was like oh man we're, we're actually gonna see him literally yeah. dies and i'm like yeah. are you kidding me that was for are me are you kidding me for me that was like it was I think like it, okay, was an, it, was, it was an amazing part, but at the same time, I'm kind of like, yeah, Jesus Christ, I can't believe he's dead. I actually thought when I was watching the intro to the movie, I'm like, this is like insane. Like it's, it's fucking madness. Right. And I'm like, is this like a different timeline or is it a flashback or a dream or something? I'm like, you can't kill off Boomerang that quick. Like, but uh, no. I, I listened to a, an interview with uh, James Gunn and he was just like, you know, I just went in, fucking killed everybody and was like, see you later, boys. And he's like, I'm going back to Marvel for Guardians 3. I'm going to do the exact same thing and then I'm banging it up. Like, so, you know, he's like definitely there to kind of fuck shit up. Like, you know, so I, I really think that uh, that was done intentionally and it's got a wow factor to it. But at the same time, it's kind of like, okay like are you are they not planning on like build i thought they were trying to build a universe here like, you know? trying, yeah <laughs> and i was thinking the same thing yeah and 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 one of the things that i was really hoping for when i was watching this i'm like okay this is the suicide squad i understand it's james gunn i understand like every, you know everybody is happy to see the setting go out my first thought was like okay we've got king shark we have captain boomerang we have harley quinn we have blood sport we have like other characters that are going to show up in a video game yeah. Can 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 we can we like bring it home mm. so that we can have the video game? Yeah. Like just like you guys said just a moment ago with with uh with the Star Wars game. Like with Yeah. Connective and, tissue, and, and it, bro. Connective tissue. Right. That's what it's all about. It should be all about. It's different though. The video game is gonna be like completely different, right? Yeah, like it's, it's a different not universe. At all. Yeah, yeah, true. Yeah. Yeah, but See, but even then, like they could have like port at all I'm sorry? for me. Like you guys didn't realize that going into the movie, I, I I was completely sold on the fact that all those characters were gonna die from the trailers. Like I, you guys I, didn't. I thought there was a no, lot. No, I was aware. A lot of, there's a lot of characters there that were like uh, Z-list fucking villains, and you're like, okay, these guys are here to be like killed. But at the same time, like I didn't think Nathan Fillion would go into a film like that and die in the first thirty seconds with his like yeah. arms disconnected from his body. Like it was just that right. It was just outrageous. Right. Yeah, that's Nathan Fillion, bro. <laughs> yeah. That was, uh, yeah, like, do you know what I mean? Like, because, like, there was such a build-up on social media with him getting put into that movie, and I'm like, this is going to be fucking amazing. I've got Nate, you're Nathan Fillion and uh, that dude from <laughs> SNL and all. Like, there was loads of, like, these really big characters that could have been, yeah. could have been, like, you know, proper villains for a while, and they killed them all off in the first three minutes of the movie. I'm like, this is insane. 
And I guess I mean, if that's exactly what they were trying to do. They they were trying to get yeah. everybody to sit back in their seats and go, what the fuck just happened? <laughs> and they did the it perfectly. DDK death was, the DDK death was one of the best. His arms were just getting oh, shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I'm like, I mean, like I said, right from the jump, this is like breaking the mold on the superhero movie. Like, yeah. like anyone can die. Yeah. Um, and I think it kind of devalued a little bit because I didn't really feel like I got connected to any character in the film as much yeah. as I wanted to. And I think that's from the expectation. Well, any one of them can die they're at just, any they're moment. Dispendable. That. But that's the point of the um, Suicide Squad. They're they're dispendable, like dispendable, like right. you know? expendable. Yeah, expendable. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. Uh, but just I because, think even if good. that's like the case of what they're supposed to be about, it still doesn't take away from like that kind of ruins it. You know what I mean? Mm. Like that's supposed to be their their purpose it still holds true that like, I don't feel like I'm connected to these characters and like, mm -hmm. you know, I, I don't, I, even at the very end of it, like Bloodsport and um, Harley Quinn, I, I never feel really connected because I'm like, they could die at any moment. So I don't really mm -hmm. care. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I just, that intro, that intro, like it didn't ruin the movie for me it, in any way, except for the fact that like, <laughs> I felt like they could have spent more time on the other characters in with that uh, amount of time they used. Cause they, they spent like, you know, 10 to 15 minutes setting up, that squad before they all just got annihilated on yeah. the beach. Mm -hmm. right. I can't, I like, can't, I can't believe uh, I can't believe Waller sent uh, Harley Quinn in on that team. Like that's actually like you know because like that was the team, the distraction. They were the team that were all going to die. They all knew um, that. Like that was the wipeout team. So I'm like, why the fuck is Harley on that team? Like I was like, and Flag as well. Like I'm like, holy shit. Like like and that just kind of mm -hmm. shows the true like evilness of Amanda Waller. She just doesn't yeah. give a mm -hmm. fuck about any of them. Like it's just like mm -hmm. throw them all in there and just like forget them. Like because a lot of those were like throwaway characters. But like you had Flag and Harley who are actually like really good soldiers. Like like Harley Quinn's a beast. Like you know. So yeah. I'm like, why is she not on Team A? Like you know. But, uh, right. Nobody, nobody's well, mentioning here either that this uh, movie really opens up the possibility to a live-action Street Sharks show. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> I want it. I'd be down for uh, Street Shark. They, actually, I, they did I King Shark. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, no. we're talking about. Sharks. I was gonna try and uh, move past the Street Sharks. <laughs> uh, no, I was gonna say. I was just gonna say they actually did. Um, <laughs> they did King Shark quite well on the Flash because they made uh, him like an actual like fucking ferocious shark and he was terrifying but he was giant as well and i thought that yeah. they actually did him very well on the flash but uh yeah this version of him while obviously it's stallone he's in he's having fun with james gunn they're friends in real life and all that shit and i just think that he was very much there as a kind of joke um and yeah it kind of if you're a fan of that character i think it definitely does kind of ruin the character for you you know it'd be kind of like i don't know being a massive fan of venom and then when they do a movie version of Venom, it's just a dumbed down idiot who, you know, can't tie his own shoes. So, yeah. oh, like you know, doing? And, oh, like what they're doing. Exactly. Well, and, sort of. And I get that it's James Gunn. So, like, he's portraying a lot of the things that happen in Guardians of the Galaxy into this movie. Like King Shark is literally a rep like a Groot, but yeah. like just even dumber. He had like, a type. It, yeah. <laughs> He these these are he's these are the types that he loves. That's why he killed the rest of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like I definitely felt but, it was a James Gunn movie watching it. Like the music mm -hmm. is is Guardians of the Galaxy. Like the characters you've got like the Weasel is like Rocket and all this sort of thing. Like there was so many comparisons to it that I was kind of like, okay, we get it. We're watching a, a fucking James Gunn movie. Like you know, so that was kind of it, it's good. The 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 kind of formula works, but at the same time, like you know, try and flip the script a little well, bit. Well, they could have they could have done WB a service, you know. Like I said, I'm going back to the video game. They could have done done it a service by keeping Boomer alive as long as they could until they were like, okay, let's be done with the character. But at least showcase uh, Boomer so that he can, like, when you when you actually play the game, you're like, hey, I saw that guy in that movie. You see how King Shark, you're like, hey, I saw that guy in that. Wait, how are we not now? He have, can speak. How are we not going to have Boomerang versus the Flash? Like how That's can you, how so, can you, it's how so can bizarre. you do that? He's one of the Flash's biggest villains. How can you not have him in the Flash movie? Like, it makes no sense. And I, I mean, I aren't they gonna have him in the Flash movie? Like, fuck it. Why he's not? Fucking dead. Like, oh, unless they do Flashpoint. <laughs> oh, if they do Flashpoint, they just change the entire universe. Wasn't he dead in the first Suicide Squad? Didn't he die in the very beginning of the first Suicide Squad movie? No. Captain Boomerang? No, no, he's alive for the I whole. I thought film. he died. No, he's alive for the whole thing. He's in the whole film. Yeah. Yeah. He's oh. in the whole thing, and then as well, he shows up in. Was it Batman versus Superman? Or he's in, he, he shows up somewhere else. Maybe it was uh, the Josh Whedon 
cut of the suicides or of the Justice League, but Boomerang shows up and it's like the Flash capturing him uh, and mm -hmm. locking him up. And I think, or maybe that's at the start of the first suicide. I can't remember, but uh, it's it's he's it, there's a fucking four second clip of him and the Flash together. It's like the Flash uh -huh. catching him trying to rob a bank or something. I'm yeah. like, how can they not have now? I think what could happen is they might do the whole flashpoint thing and then maybe the whole dc universe completely changes after the flash and mm -hmm. the events of everything that we've seen are just scrubbed and it starts a new a new base fucking universe or whatever and then you could have everyone back you know it, it really it really depends i think hey let's yeah. get weasel back <laughs> yeah well he's alive <laughs> if you watched uh, if you watch the uh, the after credit scene he is alive yeah, I'm not, even, I'm not even shitting you. I thought Captain Boomerang died in the. This is how much I hated the first movie. I don't remember anything from it. <laughs> I he died in the first one, yeah. and I thought they brought him back in this one to kind of set the tone that like it's different. Like it's yeah, it's yeah. the same, but it's different. Like no. he's that's a joke. He dies in the very beginning of every fucking Suicide Squad. Yeah, I thought that was. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that better. Squad. I like that better. I, <laughs> it'd be funny if they brought him back and they did that again, killed him again. <laughs> And then I had someone do, oh my god, you killed Captain Boomerang. Yeah, it's a you Kenny bastard. and Soberg. <laughs> like, I'm kind of hoping they do that with Weasel instead. You know, if they're going to have him this kind of character, like, just have him as multiple clones and then I just, like... My, no. My wife told, told, told back, me right? what my dog... Yeah. 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 But, like, my wife it would have been... My dog looks like Weasel, so now I fucking hate him. <laughs> my most beloved dog, she said, looks like Weasel, and I said, don't talk to me. He's eating 12 kids. <laughs> But I think that kind of like like Boomerang dying kind of like sets the set the tone for the movie then or what James Gunn is probably trying to do where it's like look if Captain Boomerang was in the first one and he didn't make it through this one like watch out like he doesn't have to live like not Harley right. doesn't have to live Flag doesn't have to live like no one has to live to the end of this yeah because uh, I'll kill off someone from the original yeah, uh, which I thought they did fucking I thought they did flag so good in this one. Yeah. Where in the last one he was kind of like he hated everyone, like he thought down on all these villains, or whatever. Yeah. And like he was like, whatever. And now he's like their only person that's rooting for them. Everyone back at like the government, yeah. like they're all betting on when they die, and like flag's the only government agent yeah. um that is willing to like, you know, care about them. And I thought the way James Gunn introduced them with that huge handshake at the very beginning, like right in your face, the hands coming out at you for flag to shake it. I'm like, dude, like James Gunn knows how to like let you know like yeah. this is how the character is like right mm -hmm. up here. Yeah. Uh, it, it was fantastic. I, I loved his character. I'm sad he's going. And then James Gunn goes, lie. "Yeah, fuck you. You like that character? Not anymore, bro. See you later." <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. When I saw John Cena in the movie at first, I was like, "Oh no." Yeah. Turned he's, out he's he was my favorite. He was my, favorite. He was my favorite. You saw, him. dude. He did. <laughs> he did Peacemaker so good. He is. So yeah. Good. And that's why like, I was oh going. I was going through the movie thinking like he's killing. They've killed off Boomerang. They're like killing all these like kind of characters that I thought would have had a future in the DC universe. And then when Peacemaker goes down, I'm like, oh okay, maybe something's happening here that it's we're gonna go back in time or something's gonna happen. Uh, and then he's I'm thinking, oh maybe because he has his own show coming on on yeah. HBO. So I'm mm -hmm. like, oh maybe his show's set in the past or something. And then obviously, you know, stay till after the credits, yeah. kids. But yeah. Now mm -hmm. I am I am not opposed to a cyborg uh, Captain Boomerang. Like just everything about him is just put together as a cyborg. I'd be down with that. At the very least, just to bring him back, just for the hell of it. But if it, if he's gone, he's gone. I get it. I I just well, he's, like he's, in terms. He's, he's literally red mist, bro. Like there's nothing. Yeah, he got. he's gone. Red mist. There's no, nothing. There was, there's nothing yeah, to turn was, into a cyborg. No brain know, matter there was whatsoever. A, there was an arm just holding the boomerang. Left, yeah. yeah. Okay, you ain't gonna use but that. It, wasn't it still powered too? <laughs> yeah, it was still glowing. You never know. You never know. Oh, I want the detachable kid to come back because that was the funniest death I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah. He's just uh, yeah, he's, <laughs> like, what do you think he was gonna do? He walks up and he starts slapping him, dude. And they're like, what? They're doing they just, start shooting just rat him. arms just flying like with no like power behind them or anything. Oh, oh yeah, it was exactly. fantastic. It was fantastic. Man, I got um, the impression. I I don't think DC is trying to the DC universe is gonna be connected at all. I feel like everything they do from now on is completely disconnected in its own movie, and that's how it should be like accepted and appreciated. Because I think they could 100% have Captain Boomerang show up in Flash like it's no big deal. Like, this is truly like comic books where, like, everyone, like, dies and is alive in different runs and different issues. 
Yeah. Um, and I, I, I think that's kind of um, a good thing. It makes them separate from Marvel where not everything's connected and they can do whatever they want in every movie. Is there a 100%. character you like? Let's try and get him in this movie. You like this character? Guess what? He's going to be in this one too. Like whatever yeah. the director or writer that gets on board, it's like whatever movie they want to make, here's the entire DC universe at your at your disposal. Don't even worry about uh, yes. if it's connected or how it is. Like I, 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 think, I, that's a, I think that's a cool take. Yeah, I, I agree so much. I think their biggest mistake is that they've been trying to be Marvel. They saw how the MCU movies did money wise and they're like, we want money. So they tried to do that. But like Marvel's already doing that well. So unless you can do better than what they're doing, which you're not going to yeah. do exactly like what you just said, Drunky, give each director. A, Here's the DC universe. Have fun, man. Yeah. Make your yeah. dreams come true. I think it all yep. it, it all lays down to the Flash. The Flash is going to change the timeline. So like mm -hmm. Marvel are doing the multiverse and DC will do timelines. That's that's what's going to happen. Um for sure. Like it's going to be alternate universe when it comes mm -hmm. back and that's how you might bring back people back cuz like I think what there's like there was reference to I think I don't know who says it. I think it's Boomerang actually. I says it to Harley Quinn at the start of the movie. He's like, "Oh, Harles, how the hell did you get back here?" So like that's a reference to the first movie that she was in the suicide squad then got out and it's like what the fuck have you done to get yourself back here and then she doesn't really yeah. say like it's not mentioned obviously she said, shoplifting. She said yeah. shoplifting yeah ridiculous like you don't get fucking a bomb in the back of your head for shoplifting like obviously something else happened but it's like they are connected like the movies are connected but i yeah. think i think where dc will do it if they do it right and i think this is the the plan is timelines so mm. and i think Feige heard about this and got scared and this is why they're doing the multiverse because of DC fucking ruin the yeah. <laughs> yeah it's it's a gamble bro it really is you know it's like it, it's been so bad so far for me bro it's been so terrible but like this is why they this is why they bring out what if and it's like oh people like a female version of captain america cool let's bring her into a movie we know it works now. yeah but they gotta really get people to dip the toes in and you know get used to it and stuff because like if they did something like that in live action without any heads up like people would be like what the fuck is going on you know so mm -hmm. i think i suppose in a way they're doing it in a smart way um but it is it 100 is a gamble mm -hmm. yeah big big time gamble i really think uh as far as the movie though like i really think that they did have a good balance between showcasing all of the other characters and then giving harley some screen time yeah yeah like i like i love it. i love harley quinn but at the same time i don't need to see her anymore if that makes sense i exactly. think like you know we've had her she's had her time she's a cool character i like watching her do like fight scenes because they're like badass like that was like the only part of her solo movie that i liked was her going through the police station with the bat just fucking beating the shit out of everyone i was like that was amazing mm -hmm. the rest of the movie was kind of yeah whatever but uh her fight scenes in this were good. I think this was definitely her best portrayal of the character. Um, yeah. But like, you know, she and, she has said that she wants to take a break now. She's like, I've done enough Hardy Quinn. I need to take a few years off. And yeah, fair play to her. Go go do whatever you want. Yeah. You know, yeah. whatever. We, we don't need you right now. Like, you know. I was in the same boat as you where I just felt like I'm like, all right, like we, we got the Harley Quinn gimmick. We've seen her at, at her best. Um, and I'll say that because this was like her kind of best version, I almost was like, I could see another Harley Quinn in any kind of film next year and have no problem with it. Cause I thought James Gunn did such a good job with her and the way, uh, I thought like, you know, really made her more empathetic than any other version where she like really, you, you get the sense of how much she's like longing and like looking just for somebody or like some type of family, yeah. like someone to like love her. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and I really enjoyed her character because of that. Um, but I do think that she's lacking because we haven't gotten her with Batman that much. We haven't gotten her with Joker that much. Yeah. Uh, her, like, she's a really good character. She's a great character because of those two, the way she plays off of those two together. And, uh, you know, um, it, it, she's been done a disservice as a whole in the DCU because she really hasn't had a Batman or Joker, uh, to go along with her. If they um, did. And so maybe down the line, like they'll be able to bring her back with one of those. If they did her mm -hmm. story properly. You know, if they if they actually showed a full movie like a, a Batman versus Joker movie and Harley Quinn's proper intro, I think you would actually love her so much more as a character now. Even if they yeah. did everything that they did the same way after, do you know what I mean? If you saw her go into the into the Suicide Squad after a solo movie of her like knowing exactly what she went through uh, with the Joker and like they proper do the whole kind of you know like how he like tortures her and stuff like that, like and just really breaks her as a as a as a character like you know like through their like toxic relationship like that would fucking sell bro that'd be so good to watch 100 mm -hmm. yeah, percent, fantastic um 
is there an Arkham show? Not not Gotham, just Arkham. There's another there? there's another Gotham show coming out. I think HBO are doing another show now. I think it's um as far as I know from what I remember, I think it actually connects to the Robert Pattinson universe, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. But it's like a, another version of the Gotham show, but in his universe. So I don't know. I think they need to do something. Well, like I would love to see Ben Affleck uh, do a, like a six-part series, and then have him go against like maybe Deathstroke. And well, I don't know if it would, it would probably need to be if you're going to do, introduce more than one villain, it would need to be more than six episodes, I think, to do it right. But have him definitely against Deathstroke, and then maybe do like a season with him against the Joker, and have Harley Quinn in there, and that's mm-hmm. perfection. Like that's exactly I, like where it needs to be. I really think. Just for like uh, an introspective into all the villains, I really think that they need to do an Arkham show, like Arkham Asylum show, yeah, yeah, yeah. where it's it's very grounded. Mm-hmm. All of the villains are behind bars or you know behind glass, and it's just these interviews that they do. Yeah, you know, wondering like just talking to them, getting to know like what's inside their brain. Because when you go into Arkham, you you really like, uh, especially in the video games, when you go into Arkham you get all of these like descriptions of like who they are, what they did, why are they this way? And you know, all, you know, why they're going to continue to do what they're going to do. And, and then you can end it in a way where like the last few episodes are like the interview with, with Joker. Mm-hmm. And then you bring, and then you bring Harley in and you see that yeah. Harley's talking to Joker. And so it ends basically with Harley being manipulated by Joker to eventually like side with him and get him out yeah and like i think that would be that would just fun. be so perfect it would be fun that'd be a good joker I, movie i think i think that'd make a good joker movie you do a joker movie with him in arkham and then you get to meet all the villains you get to see behind the behind the, the bars and then it's like you see the manipulation of harley and then the movie ends with him breaking out and then it links into something else but or you know links yeah. into, links into a batman show with, with, with ben affleck or something like that which I think really well, the, fucking the only reason why the only reason why I want to make it a, a, a an episodic show is because it'd be nice to see some additional backstory mm-hmm. because when you make it into a movie I, I don't know how much backstory you can give to each character without it seeming a little rushed yeah no, you know no, I, I, mean? I think do a show but like as 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 a jo- as joker like you know it's a it's a joker show I don't think I don't think anybody sits down to watch a show just about Arkham Asylum you know unless you're a diehard Batman fan like I don't think that really sells. Like even the Gotham TV show, I watched it. I was a fan of it. And um, like you're watching mm-hmm. like Bruce Wayne as a ten year old child in it when you start the show. It's a bit weird. You know, it's like mm-hmm. this is what happened to, okay. to 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 Bruce directly after the his parents got killed. You know, and it's really a show about Alfred and him kind of raising Bruce. But like a lot of that show is based in Arkham Asylum. So like I don't know if you haven't seen that, Alex. I would watch, okay. I'd watch that show if I were you because there's a lot of Arkham in that show. Um, and you do you get to see Scarecrow, you get to see loads of like characters in their youth, Poison Ivy, Catwoman, they're all kids growing up with Bruce Wayne and it's how they kind of develop into adults and stuff like that and how they become the characters that they need to be like and Gotham ends with Bruce becoming Batman. Like it's it's pretty cool, like but at the same time okay. it wasn't that popular. So I don't know how you sell like I don't like I think that was a kind of like it wasn't a very overly successful show, but it was good. And that's kind of about a child version of Bruce Wayne. I just don't know, like, if you were to do a show, like, it would need to be based on the Joker or something to sell, like, you know. Like, I right, so... I, I'm, I'm sorry, Pinto, that show sucked ass. I tried. Yeah. <laughs> that thing sucked, man. I think if you... St- it did, how much of it did you watch, though? Uh, a season. Yeah, like, it got... it got As he got older and, like, started... You saw him kind of turn into Bruce Wayne. He got a bit, like... Uh, he got a bit cocky with the money and stuff like that, like, in later seasons, and... You just kind of saw the birth of a few of the characters and like it was kind of more about like it was really about commissioner gordon it was like his right yeah. rank like rise up the ranks to get to commissioner and stuff that was kind of cool and like the whole penguin story and stuff like that like penguin was pretty good in it as well but and, uh, it's yeah. not great it's not look it wasn't it wasn't fucking amazing <laughs> but Did you, have you seen the first episode of titans Vento? i watched the first two today yeah and i gotta i gotta yeah. say kyle i wasn't very happy with it you were happy. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I was. I was. I was. I was very happy. Of the 
I'm a, I'm You're a, a huge fan of the Red Hood, so if I anyone am, has am, a bro. reason not to be, it'd be you. I think I'm very. I think I'm a little, just a little upset, but I think we can talk about it in a separate video if you want, Kyle. Because oh yeah, for I sure. I would like to talk a lot. Deeper you just said Commissioner it. Gordon, and that was something that uh, the first episode is titled Barbara Gordon, and yeah, I did not yeah. even know about her existence. What? Is she in the comics too? She's Black Girl, bro. Yeah. I she's didn't know she was in the. She's Black I didn't Girl, even and then in the Odd bro, Garden, you know, she becomes Oracle when she. So basically, okay. listen. The Joker all I'm saying is, <laughs> yeah, is uh, Black Girl. Black Girl is um, Halle Berry. That's the only Black Girl I ever knew. Berry. She was Catwoman. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, back, no, I see a Catwoman. She was. She was. Catwoman. It's the same thing. Black Girl oh, and Catwoman God. are not the same thing. What are you talking about? Yeah, same thing. No. <laughs> what? Bro, I'll be honest. Dude. None of like the Batman. So like, growing up, I did not like any of Batman sidekicks. I didn't like Robin, mm. and I I didn't I never liked Robin until I heard, learned about Nightwing, and then I started liking Robin. Yeah, I, I, I love I love uh, like Batman is <laughs> as I've I probably said this a few times, but Batman for me is like that's my most enjoyed like comics. I love sitting down and reading Batman comic books so much. Like, I just so good. hate out every the comic book fans will say Batman with prep time can stop. Thanos. Yeah, and he has he has con contingencies he, in there to like kill yeah, everybody Superman, says, like you know, he can do anything. Yeah, Batman He's... with prep time can apparently you know yeah. stop the uh, King the Conqueror. In the comic books, he literally becomes a god at one point because he sits in this. They call it the Morbius chair or Mobius chair, um, and he literally like gets all <laughs> knowledge, like, and he becomes a fucking god, like, like that's how serious like Batman is in the comic books. Like, he's a yeah, fucking badass. Bro. I, it's the funniest, and meme he's just I a jack dude like... with money. Like, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah all the memes who, like fucking has a backup plan to take down Superman, but struggles with the fucking Riddler. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that's tough one here, huh? Like... Well, but Superman, Superman's <laughs> easy. Always, Superman's easy. Sure, all you need is Kryptonite, you know. So mm -hmm. it's like, and that's why I don't like Superman mm -hmm. as a character. It's like. Every single thing, like, and this is why I hated Superman when I was a kid. It was why I loved Spider Man and stuff like that, because it's like, I can relate to this guy. He has actual problems. It's like Superman could literally, like, punch a hole through the earth if he wanted to, but it's like, don't fucking put any kryptonite in front of him, otherwise he's useless, like, you know? And it was like every episode of Smallville, every episode of Lois and Clark, like, every, like, all these Superman content, it's like, fucking, he's digging a hole in the ground out the back garden, and it's like, oh my god, kryptonite, he just falls over and he nearly dies. Like, I'm like, this is just fucking stupid, like, you know? It's so true, though. <laughs> oh, it's ridiculous, dude. It, like, oh, Small what happened? Was... Oh, I've been passed out here for eight hours. Smallville was so touched. funny with it, like, you know, because it's like, they their storyline was like, you know, he crashed down, and, like, his crash, like, brought some kryptonite or whatever, and then it spread through the town of Smallville. So, you know, he'll be fighting somebody, and he gets thrown into a wall, and it's like, there's kryptonite in the wall. Like, it's like, just so fucking yeah. stupid, like... Uh... <laughs> Sorry, I was like painted this with kryptonite. Yeah, awesome. what was that one movie where he just lifted an entire like island of kryptonite? I think that was the the Brandon Roth one, wasn't it? Um, where yeah. he was like lifting all the kryptonite, and he was like dying, like, but he was like, I have to do this for for Lois and my unborn child and shit. Like, it's just, yeah, it's just the weirdest thing because like Im like kryptonite immediately like reduces him to nothing. Yeah, it's always so. Was he like was he in front of the sun or something? Was it was it like yeah. combating with him? Like the levels were going nuts. I don't know, bro. I just I always found I always found the Superman thing to be really boring because it's like it's always Kryptonite. And one thing that I'll tip my hat to fucking Zack Snyder for as well, like it was that like he, at least he kind of did it in a cool way. Yeah. Like you know he turned like he got Batman to weaponize it as gas and all this sort of thing. Like and but then you see Henry oh, no. Cavill snapping out of it and like I love that scene. It's one of my favorite scenes. Like when you know when Batman's punching him with the armored suit on and he's getting crippled and then you can just see it wear off and it's just like he turns like it just turns to like Superman just turns to stone and it's like he's hitting him and he's not even moving a budge. Like I'm like fuck. I, that I thought is you were so gonna dope. say when he got hit with the the uh, Omega beam and just fucking exploded. That was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you saw like his ribs and skeleton explode and then I was like, hey, ain't so invincible, are you, Superman? <laughs> Yeah, bro. Yeah, I don't know. I, I thought Suicide Squad, <laughs> if, if they continue to do this, like, I, I call it the Deadpool take, is what I think of it in my head as. If they do this thing where they don't take themselves serious, and if DC in general keeps doing that, I think they'll they'll do great. But at the same at the same time, I I don't know. You you do have people that like Fento. One of the first things he said to me was like, "I can't believe what they did to Captain Boomerang." Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like you have people that are big fans of some of these people that 
when they get taken out nonchalant. Yeah. It's like, ah. Uh, yeah, he deserved a better I, death than that. I mean, the, like, and it's, and it can't be, it, like, the, one of the things about dying in a, in a movie is it, it I really don't want it to be obvious anymore. Like when we saw Polka Dot Man like shoot like his stuff at at uh, Starro, <laughs> and so it's like ridiculous. as soon as I saw that, and as soon as I saw it was like his leg, and then and then you saw like the representation like falling towards uh, Polka Dot Man. I'm like, He's, whatever, Later, bro. Whatever. <laughs> Bye. Yeah. Whatever. Who cares? Imagine I, if you would just aim for the fucking eye. Yeah. <laughs> right. Here's the thing that can just <sighs> shred through a fucking space being. Yeah. Oh no, we're aiming for his leg. Yeah, yeah, okay. let's take out one of his fucking eight legs. <laughs> he just hates his mom's legs so much. Yeah. I thought that was very funny. Like the comedy <laughs> so comedy in the movie was fantastic. Like it was, it was very, great. It was, it was yeah. very, very funny. Um Yeah, I just like I don't know. Like here's a here's a, I, I actually read during the week that um James Gunn has said that he does want to continue working with DC. But he wants to do it in a much like reduced capacity so he wants to do like a solo movie or a duo movie but he wants to stay in like the villain verse as they call it so it's like who do you think like i put it out to each of you guys like what who do you want to see like it, james Gunn directing a solo movie for me i want to see like a deathstroke movie i think a deathstroke movie will be fucking amazing uh, I would love to see the story of Slade Wilson told properly. He basically is Deadpool. Dead. They copied him to make Deadpool. He basically is Deadpool, but like he's just not a fucking idiot. Like he just, he's a fucking absolute warrior uh, who has like advanced like intelligence and strength through like an injection, kind of like Steve Rogers. And his suit is like its own AI. It's its own like he has like it's an Iron Man suit basically. So yeah, um, his suit gives him powers along with the fact. So he's basically a mashup of power-wise. He's a mashup of Iron Man and Steve Rogers, but he's a bad guy. Like mm. fuck me, bro. Like, could you imagine a full movie of him going around like full-blown Marine style, like mercenary, like taking out doing contracts and stuff? That shit would be yeah. fucking fire. And then like you know, you get him. He gets a contract across the thing where it's like, uh, you gotta go kill Batman. Like, and then it's like, boom, like you know bring Affleck in or something. No, big keep him, no, keep him with Nightwing. Keep him with Nightwing, bro. Uh, yeah, Slade I, Wilson versus the Titans. Yeah, like him versus the Titans. Him versus the Titans. And like there has been talks of like Titans movies and stuff like that and a Nightwing movie. So I think, yes, that makes sense. Like this is where this is where DC need to go. They need to be doing shit like this. They need to be doing crazy villain movies that tie into the fucking Titans and uh, Nightwing movies and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I think that's that's where they're down to a winner. I think they try and do the Marvel thing, but do it like the opposite way. Like, you know, where you're kind of focused more Wait. on the villains and then you bring in a hero and it's like, boom, the hero is the one that's not really like, you know, Batman is the Thanos of DC, if that makes sense. You know, I think, I think that's you guys will get this analogy. I think of DC as like the Mortal Kombat of it's like they're the Mortal Kombat. Like even when you think of like Street Fighter versus Mortal Kombat, Mortal Kombat had that like their big thing was they would show the blood. They had a little bit of goofiness with like the whoopsie and people would fall on spikes though. They had the gore. They had, they crossed the limits that like people didn't want to cross back in the early nineties with these games. If they stick in that lane, a uh, lane of being like the Mortal Kombat of these superhero things where they're okay to show all this gore. Cause that's the stuff that about these movies that I love the most is like these deaths are gnarly. You see like helicopters hitting people. You see people's heads getting bit off like he's literally gnawing on a dude's head as he walks around for a couple minutes king yeah. shark is like yeah that and then like that's the stuff that we want to see because we know we're never going to get that from disney marvel yeah. it's not going to happen but it's funny that you mentioned that kyle because nether realm studios which creates mortal Kombat, is owned by warner brothers <laughs> there yeah. you go so really <laughs> there you yeah go. so this is why they're there able to do all this stuff because they already have the gore ready to go I'm going to bring up a Everything. video. You guys keep talking. I'm going to bring up a video here now in a second that I think a few of you may have seen. Um, but all they need this to the... do, all they need to do is adapt this into live action. And this is honestly, like it's the, it would be the best fucking movie ever. And uh, it was like a cinematic trailer that they released for one of the Arkham games um, where it's Batman versus Deathstroke. Have you guys seen this? Like this is honestly, this this trailer was made about like fucking oh, sure. twelve years ago, 
and the cinematics in it are absolutely stunning and mm -hmm. oh my god like all they need to do is turn this into a fucking film live action movie live action version of this it's all they need to do and it would honestly it would be the best dc movie ever made and i think this is mm. where james gunn needs to go next i'm literally i'm gonna throw it on now and uh yeah we have we have to see this wait till you see this sure. we're going to the theater <laughs> I like the music edition, by the way. I like the music edition. Peggy 16. By the way. Peggy 16. So fast, Deathstroke. He's my kill. A body? No. And next time, keep your other assassins out of my way. You had your shot, Deathstroke. But you're not the only assassin in town. And the night is young.
I never Crazy. knew Black Mask. Guys, was is he a badass? Black uh, he yeah. was. He was actually in, um, the Harley Quinn movie. Um, okay. Wasn't he Ewan McGregor? Ewan you, McGregor Ewan played McGregor. him. Yeah, and genuinely, like, like, that's the great. That could be the greatest piece of like Batman, like media I've ever seen in like real life if that makes sense i know it's not real life but I agree. that was i believe that trailer was made in like something like 2009 like look at how good the fucking cinematics were for that like so long ago it was mind-blowing and um, i believe that is uh, arkham origins um and like honestly when i first heard about like black mask coming out and them doing deathstroke and all that sort of thing i was like shit this is where they're, they're going to something like this and i I think, you know, real world fucking shit got in the way, but that was where they should have gone. You know, I don't know why they didn't do it. Um, like, you mm -hmm. know, you've got pretty much all the characters there. You had Will Smith as Deadshot. You had fucking Joe Megliano as, as uh, Deathstroke and Ewan McGregor as Black Mask and, you know, Ben Affleck. Mm -hmm. And oh, it just would have been absolutely perfect. perfect. The universe was being set up and it just it was. Got yeah, and it wondered. just got destroyed, like, you know. And I just think, like, you get to a stage where you do something like that. Like, if you just adapted that scene right there, like, like if, I, if I could get myself into a room with the people that make the decisions at Warner Brothers about these movies, I would literally put that fucking up on the screen and I'd say, turn that into an hour and a half movie and you have a fucking blockbuster, bus, bu uh, a blockbuster right there. Like, it's that easy. It really is. Like, that's what people want to see. That's, what, that's exactly what people want to see. Now, if you tell the story from Deathstroke's perspective... I think it even works even better. Like, I just think, you know, it's something different, but at the same time, you've got the epicness of him versus Batman, but you're viewing it and even rooting for Deathstroke, you know, because you see the struggles that he goes through with, like, the, he has a whole storyline with, with a couple of his kids, then one of them dies, and then there's, like, a whole shit with his ex-wife who, like, she kind of, like, works for Argus or one of these, like, big corporations, like, you know, she's a government agent and all this shit. And it's just, oh, there's just really cool shit there. And then like he has a, he has a um a partner who's his name's Wintergreen, and he's kind of like, he's kind of like Sully is to Nathan Drake, you know that sort of relationship. Like so, there's just so much to play off, cinematically there, and it's just a no-brainer to be. I'm like, why has nobody done this yet? Like you know, because it's it's right. it's I'm got this kind ass, of fucking worst. Who Warner Brothers? Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're, they're the worst, bro. I, I genuinely think that there's like some fucking agenda to just destroy DC Comics. Like, I don't know if Mar if Disney and Marvel are paying them under the table to just destroy the fucking franchise, like destroy from the inside out. But it just does not make any sense. There is so many years of amazing content in animation, in games, in comic books, and it's just all there for the taking. Like, you you could do it. You could do it in a lazy way and just like copy the storylines that we know from DC and love, like turn any one of the animated batman movies into a live action version script word for word it's a fucking box office smash straight away yeah i just i don't get it it makes no fucking sense to me until you you played all of the uh the arkham series games right i actually haven't i haven't completed them all um i've played i played the very first one um and mm -hmm. then i played uh the I started what was the first one was it arkham uh asylum? arkham asylum yeah so i played yeah. that one and then um i played the i started the second one never got around to finishing it and then i think arkham knight was the last one that they released am i right arkham knight mm -hmm. or something or whatever it was called arkham city right arkham city maybe? uh arkham knight arkham knight was the third one arkham. and arkham city was the second one yeah yeah so i played arkham knight because I remember I bought that game because I watched a trailer and I saw that you could jump into the Batmobile. <laughs> I was like, I'm buying it straight away. <laughs> like, you can literally dive off a building and you press triangle and you then, like, the, the fucking car pulls up right below you and you just literally float into it and then you drive around Arkham. It's, really like, good. it's incredible. Yeah. I was like, I yeah. bought that game just for that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Sure. And then there was a really cool um, storyline in that game as well involving Jason Todd. So it was, it was another kind of take on the Jason Todd story, which was really fucking mm. cool as well. So, um, yeah, I'm off for I, I'm I would. Too. I would recommend if you can, Finto. I like you. You don't have to finish the first one if you don't want to. Um, I would highly recommend going back into City yeah. and completing City mm -hmm. because the way it works from start to finish, it's by far like, like it's the most superior Batman game out of all of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I do. I, I think I have them all on PC now as well. 
I think I got I picked them up when they were free on Epic, so yeah, that could be mm -hmm. something Same. to something to fill the weeks. Because I'm getting mm -hmm. so tired of all this Bior bullshit. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, so I'm, I mean, why why do you think I I haven't really touched them in a while? Like, oh, you're I think you're dead right, dude. It's it's good to get a break from that sort of shit, and like I just. I still have a love for Fortnite, but I can't play it. And, you know, Apex is fun, but at the same time, I see it really pissing me off in a few weeks' time. And, you know, Warzone, you can't even fucking turn on the game. You know, you're getting hackers before you've even booted in. Like, the hackers are affecting the game. Like, you know what I mean? It's that much of a joke. Yeah. <laughs> they're fucking, they're deleting shit off your desktop. That's how ridiculous the game is. <laughs> so <laughs> horrible. Boobs and paint. Yeah. Like, oh, I haven't even opened the game yet. So yeah, I don't know, like it's just, I, I, I really want, and I say this all the time, but I, I want a game like Fortnite in 2018, I want something to take over my life, like, um, but there's nothing there, there's nothing there, and I enjoy being a variety streamer, like, you know, I like playing different games, so I think mm -hmm. definitely, I was, I was contemplating going back, and I think I'll go back and play Jedi Fallen Order in the game plus mode before the next one comes out, um, mm -hmm. I think that'll be fun, and um, I think I'm probably i might do miles in game plus as well and then i might do some of the the, the arkham games as well <laughs> for sure for sure yeah i definitely want to play through the arkham games myself again because i've gone through them all once and like that's a plan by the end of the year to like get back through them all because like i just i love them bro like they're You're so, good. so good yeah for sure they're great and drunk <laughs> you, you need to do uh far cry 3 bro far cry 3 oh that is one of the best games <laughs> That's one of the best games yeah. I've ever played in my entire life. Like, no joke. Like, that game, I was obsessed with it. And it was one of, one of the games that I first, like... Because I find, like, when you're playing a game on PlayStation, I find it's not like... You know when you're kind of sitting on your couch and you're not really immersed in it? Like, I find that's, like, one of the things that's amazing about PC gaming is you're right up in it. Like, you feel like you're in it. Yeah. Um, and I think Far Cry 3 was one of the first games that I ever played where it was like, oh, holy shit, like, you know, I am in this game like i went around there's a thing you can go around and do all these like, kind of side missions so it's kind of open world in a way and you can kind of go around and do these side missions where you take over all these camps and i went around and did them all like and like mm. it would be something that i wouldn't usually do in a game i don't really like 100 percent in games like i'm all about the storyline and then when that's finished i'm kind of like okay let's move on to something else but this was a game where right. i was like i have to fucking play this whole game i have to finish it like so it was one of the games that i set out to 100 percent and I just couldn't put it down. It was incredible. Mm -hmm. and I think I think you'll fucking love it, dude. It's 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 a game that's made for you, Drunky. Hundred percent. It's incredible. Just, You'd be lost in it, dude. My just. Yeah, you got it. And then in terms of completing a game to its fullest, like a hundred percent, it's really hard when you stream that and and yeah. like you are forgetting something or you don't know how to complete something. Yeah. And therefore you don't you don't want to drag the the viewers. Yeah. like on a chain as you're like sure. come on like i gotta figure this out so that was like i me totally with that plague it. tale game bro i got so fucking pissed off at the last boss that i had to complete it offline and i just recorded myself completing it <laughs> offline and drew it on the end of the video i was like i just can't do this so i felt so bad people were sitting in the chat and i was just like fucking raging like trying to finish this mm -hmm. it was two o'clock in the morning i was absolutely shattered tired like i was like i just can't do this guys i gotta quit like <laughs> i felt so bad yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i was like i'm the worst fucking gamer ever <laughs> And then I did it in 10 minutes offline the next day when I was awake and, you know, it was like during the day, I was like, it took me 10 minutes to do the next time around. Like, I was like, fuck, fuck. <laughs> Sometimes it's like that. I know, yeah. dude, I know, I know, I know. It's like when you're playing, it's, I'm pretty sure everyone here has played Guitar Hero. Oh, yeah. You play it for so many times, you get so good, and then immediately, like, a few minutes later, you start falling off of it and you're like, I, I, I need a minute. Yeah. Take, a, take some time off, you grab a drink, like you sit down, you just chill out. You come back and you beat it on the first run again. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. Mm -hmm. Um, let me think. I want to see if I just have any notes from the week. A couple of rumors and stuff we can bring up. Um. Oh, did you hear? Actually, speaking about Suicide Squad, I saw a thing during the week. They were saying some like behind the scenes stuff got leaked, and there was a storyboard picture from like the writers' room. And they had pictures of Deathstroke up on the wall for Suicide Squad. And it looked like he was originally meant to lead the team instead of Rick Flagg in this. So I don't know if it was before they hired Idris to do his role, like as Bloodsport. I think they were they were really going down the route that they were going to have Deathstroke in there. Yeah. Which would have been kind of crazy. That'd be fun. But like, do you th I mean, I don't know. I don't know much about DC to be overall. 
Like, do you think Deathstroke is the type to even be in the Suicide Squad? He would he's never. Fuck he, Deathstroke, yeah, yeah, he'd ne he'd never have the bomb in his head. Sure, he'd just like literally pick it out of the back of his head himself, like, and then he'd just heal. Yeah. He'd heal instantly, like. But I think it, <laughs> I think it'd be interesting if there was a storyline there, like you know he needed to be there for a reason, like you know someone had his son captured or something like that, like you know I think there's or certain that. certain circumstances where you could get him to do it, um. But yeah, I don't, I don't know how they would make it work for a movie. You would need to have a serious mm -hmm. build-up for it to make sense. But I just thought it was very interesting because, you know, there was like... I don't know if I can find it. Um, It'd be a cool storyline if they had him like as a mercenary that the government hired to go in there because they know how legit he is, how much he keeps a secret. And like he was just like a, a third team in there all by himself who was like always like in the backgrounds. And you're like, what the fuck? And he's like watching, like, what the fuck are these amateurs doing? <laughs> yeah, that'd yeah. be a great character for I, I like a background character almost for sure. Like, and I think you know if they got Joe to actually play him, um, I think he's he's a very funny actor as well. So I think he would kind of play that character quite well, and that's in that like kind of scenario. I think yeah, like, you know, you could have um him kind of poking fun and going, "Geez, these guys are fucking amateurs. I can't believe I'm like teamed up with these losers and all this sort of thing." Like, you know, and I think that would really work with him. I think he'd be a good character for it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that really would work. I'm trying to find this picture to see if I can show you. Oh, you want to hear a little tidbit? Sure. Uh, today is Sebastian Stan's birthday. Nice. Oh, uh, happy birthday, buddy. Like 45, 48? I don't know, actually. Um, mm -hmm. He's probably older than we think. He's got to be in his 30s still. Oh, he's above his 30s. He's, no, he's 39. Oh, Damn. yeah, I actually found this picture here. Let me throw this up. So, um, just to zoom out, this is the picture. James Gunn, kind of, like, fucking, this is the writer's room. And there, look, see Team 2 up in the corner? Oh. Mm -hmm. do, 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 do. Deathstroke. It's kind of hard to see it, but you can see the, mm -hmm. the two-tone face. Like, that's definitely him. And there's, like, oh, Peace yeah. Peacekeeper and so on. So, like, that was, yeah. there, there he is there, clear as day, uh, beside him. Yeah. So, like, that was definitely on the cards. And there's Boomerang there, wonder, team team one. I wonder if they wanted to save him. Yeah, I think they have plans. He's a great character. Like I just don't understand how they haven't done anything with him. And obviously there was the kind of the after credit scene in um both of the Justice League movies. You know, so they definitely have plans to do, to use him. Hundred percent. Maybe they're maybe they're planning to do exactly what you're wanting from them. Oh, that would yeah. be so cool, dude. Mm -hmm. Speaking of Sebastian mm -hmm. Stan's birthday, actually I want to play a quick video. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen it, but it's him in the in the the audio boot doing his lines for oh, uh, so good. Fuck of what if? Did you see this? Yeah, <laughs> it's so funny, dude. Uh, let's see. Here. Yeah. <laughs> He's so fucking good, dude. And I just don't think that like I presume we're getting more Winter Soldier because like I no, I haven't seen any of this shit live like in the show yet. But listen to this. This is just so funny. Yeah. Okay, so if there's a fly going around, there's a fly going around. There's a fly going around. There's a fly going around. God damn it. No, I can't say that, can I? I can't say god damn it. No, I can't say that. Is that it? I'm gonna hey ha ha I'm gonna hey Right, I'm frustrated. I'm frustrated and I'm annoyed. I'm get you. I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get you. I'm annoyed. Get you. Fuck you. Okay. As long as you think this is okay. What an actor, bro. Yeah. yeah. That's exactly what I was Jeez, saying so earlier funny. is I feel yeah. like they they they're willing to go out there more. Yeah. He's funny, dude, like for sure. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> Otherwise, like, I can't say God damn it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I'm trying to see rumors, rumors, rumors. Mm. I couldn't remember if I saw any either. I saw um, there was a thing, apparently, Kang's chair. There was, like, a uh, from Ant-Man 3. There was, like, a backstage thing that was kind of released. It was, like, they're building his chair on set, like, so Kang's going to have the ability to time travel in that movie. Which is pretty interesting and then as well mm. uh janet's quantum realm fortress is going to be in this as well so a lot of people are saying like oh maybe this is where they might like try and okay so i think that whole her whole like 
uh, the Quantum Realm Fortress, I think, is a big Fantastic Four storyline, as far as I know. So that could be like maybe where they maybe introduce one of the Fantastic Four, or she might mention that she knew them or something like that, like because time works differently down there. You know? Bro, if they don't do a period piece for the Fantastic Four, I'll be so mad, bro. <laughs> That's all I want. I want them to set it up in like the 1960s. I want a 1960s Fantastic Four. I want them to go into the fucking ice or whatever it is, the quantum realm, and then come yeah. back out in the modern day, bro. For like when they get introduced into the, or they go to outer space, whatever it is. But I want them to start them in the 1960s. Yeah, dude, I like it. Yeah. I like it a lot. Hey, just want to remind you fellas, you might want to look into getting your Shang-Chi tickets here in the next week or so. Really? Are they up? Uh, They should be selling already. Okay. It's September 3rd, right? Mm -hmm. Second. I'm, I'm... Uh, they're second here. Oh, yeah, like on a Thursday. Let's see when yeah, I get Thursday. to see the movie. Because <laughs> I'm probably going to get to see it a week before. Yesterday? A week before. Yeah, shit, it's out yeah. already. <laughs> okay, buddy. Finn is is like, oh, you're... I got to go. I got it in the podcast right yeah, now, guys. Sorry. Shit, it's on right now. You're out again. Let's see. How much did it cost you again, Drunky? It was like 230 bucks. That's not bad at all. That really is. Honestly, like, not at all. Like, if you get a couple people to go with you, you know what I mean? What, what, what? For Included what? In those you rented seats, out an entire um, theater, did you? Yeah, the, the, our family, like, uh, we, you know, kind of COVID's kind of dipping. COVID's getting a little gnarly here in Florida right now, and we want to go see The Green Knight, so we rented out a movie theater. So fucking cool, dude. Florida, uh, it's always been gnarly there. Y'all are just taking notice now. <laughs> well, we just got, <laughs> they just got the test out here now, okay? We're a little behind. We're dragging. Um, I want to recount on your COVID test. Still so, yeah, not up. Like 230. So if like you get like 10 people together who like want to go see this stuff, you know, that's not. Yeah, that's, that's not outrageous, bro. That's, that's not outrageous. I would do that all to the have time. People, you know, that was something that like never, ever happened here. Like people aren't able to do it. Like it was a thing that was like never really even an option. And I remember Justin Timberlake was in Dublin before. And I think he was going out at the time with, or I don't know if he, he was with Cameron Diaz, I think at the time. He was with her for a while, was he? Or is he even still? I don't even know. But uh, mm -hmm. he, him and him and Cameron Diaz were in like the closest cinema to where I live, and fucking Justin Timberlake went up to the fucking thing, like to the ticket stand, like a boss, and bought every fucking seat just so the two of them could sit in the cinema and watch a film by themselves. Because like, yeah, you know, it's not a thing where you're able to like rent a full screen. So he was like, "Give me every seat." <laughs> yeah, what a legend! <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And he had Finto who actually camped it out, and he's sitting there right next to him. The whole theater's empty. And it's Imagine. Cameron and JT sitting right there, and Finto directly behind him. Yeah, sup, guys? Hey, guys, <laughs> hey, hey guys can you shut the Reserve fuck up? The I'm trying to watch the movie. <laughs> Kick in the back of their seat. Hey, Cameron. Hey, Cameron, shut the fuck up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, the release date here is saying September 3rd as well, but it says to be confirmed, so I presume... I'm kind of scared. Later. I'm kind of really scared at the moment. There's a lot of talk about some stuff getting delayed. Um, yeah. The likes of like Venom's. They're talking about changing the date for Venom again. Um, they might move it up oh. to like October or even January next year, which is very bad if they do that. Um, it's it's funny that you mentioned the Finto. Um, I actually have the update on that. Go on. So um, Sony has officially delayed Venom 2 to October 15th. Okay. Ooh. That kind of makes sense mm -hmm. to me because, like, I think it fits better as a, as like an October movie because it's kind of like horror oh, in a way, nearly. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that makes sense. Um, well, they're gonna they want to sell freaking Venom merch, bro. Yeah, Venom costumes, Carnage costumes. I I think it's really gonna the movie is somehow gonna connect to Spider Man Three as well. Mm, Tom, bro, Har Tom you've Hardy been saying selling. that about the last five Tom, projects on MCU. Quit Tom putting Hardy, your dreams in the air. Tom Hardy is selling the whole shit. A lot about he's talking a lot about Spider Man right now. Um, and so you said that about everything nope. that's come out in the past half year. This is gonna tie into Spider Man, and we're gonna see a trailer. Thank God we, we have, have a... thank God we have fucking evidence of all this because when I'm right, I'm just gonna be like, go back and watch it, bros. I was saying this shit eight months ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Nostradamus out here is predicting the world's gonna end every other day, and one of these days the world's gonna end, and that'll show him. Yeah. Be like fucking knew I was right. <laughs> oh my god. Um yeah, I heard a fucking crazy one as well. Um they were talking about during the week. So apparently the guy who created the Winter Soldier, um, the character for the comic books, right? He's still alive, he's still kicking. Um it was it was kind of 
he was asked in an interview like you know what kind of royalties do you get like creative royalties like from marvel because you created a character and he's now in a billion do- billion dollar movies and all this sort of shit and uh apparently like when a movie comes out so like the winter soldier comes out apparently he said that what he got was a, a thank you letter for creating the character <laughs> right and um five thousand dollar check which he said in the letter had said we do not owe you this this is like a courtesy like how fucked up is I that when you think when you think do about they it spit, like, uh, do it's they like, spit and then close it it's like the character you created made a billion dollars for us here's five thousand dollars which we don't have to give to you and a thank you letter like it's fucked up it's I crazy. feel like Stan. I feel like Stan Lee was alive when that started off, and I don't know how much of a say he has in that. But I feel like maybe he could have been like, "Listen, this guy came up with it. Yeah. I'm Stan Lee. This is all my shit. Yeah. Pay this man some more money." So like, I don't know how much he's involved in that, but Stan Lee's name is on a lot of shit. Like, and you know, he didn't solely create a lot of the characters. Like, you know, like he. he yeah, they he make it. They so... make it seem like he yeah. created everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah and no, it he definitely. Wasn't. He only created like a few. I think he did uh, Captain America, Fantastic Four, Spider Man. Co- um, I co- think he also did the Hulk. Co-created Spider Man, so like it's like how much of that did right. he actually do? You know. Um, yeah, and so much of it was good. Oh yeah, movie. he did like Captain America, the Fantastic Four, Spider Man. It's no big fucking deal. <laughs> yeah. No big deal. Sorry, this, drunkie. It's no big deal. It's, there's so there's so there's a lot of Marvel that he had nothing to do with, though. You know, and it's I think it was definitely perceived that he did everything. You know, so there's a well, lot. He was, of, he was the uh, the editor. He's this the Marvel method. You know what I mean? He's the mm-hmm. big boy for sure. He, I yeah, just thought, I thought that was, I thought that was a very crazy story from during the week. I just like couldn't believe it. It's like I'll be honest I with you, that, that, that five thousand is probably more money than he's seen from Marvel in the past fucking ten years. You know what I mean? True, true. Uh, it, it, it's true. It, it's it's horrible what all of these um all these comic book companies have done to the, their creators and like the people who actually created their characters and wrote for them, drew for them. There's actually charity and like GoFundMe campaigns and charities that are specifically set up to support these uh, comic book creators who had no, like no real rights to anything they created from like the 1950s and sixties and seventies. Like it, it wasn't until like the eighties and you know, the nineties where they got rolling, where they, they started getting rights and like real royalties from the stuff they, they created, man. Like yeah. the comic book industry is, uh, like horrible and Disney just like turned it up to an 11 and like gave you a, a fuck you like five thousand dollars bro like five grand Get out of a out like... of a billion <laughs> like it's fucking oh yeah insane, I feel dude. like that's such like the comic book industry is such uh, like set up in a way that says fuck your intellectual property like oh yeah you made this hero we're gonna make the same exact hero but name him something different in DC like that's all they have done since the start was I'm stealing your idea and then you're stealing my idea and we're stealing oh, 100%. ideas to make and it no to, one's getting credit. to make it worse as well, I believe he said in a, in a previous interview that he actually hates what the, what Marvel did with the character for the movies. <laughs> so can you imagine? <laughs> well, it's I mean, like they he, they take his character, they change it, and then that ends up making like a billion dollars or more in the box office. And it's like, yeah, here's five grand, you know, and a thank yeah, you, and a you thank you note take, for doing it. It's you fun. should tell Sebastian Stan like, hey, you better front me like a cool milli, bro. Man, I I'd like, and I don't like, you know. I don't know if this is just me being ridiculous, but I truly believe if I was Sebastian Stan and I heard that this the, the guy who created the character that changed my fucking life got five G's, I I would honestly probably give him some of my own fucking money because exactly. I'd be like, bro, you, you you are the reason I'm living in a mansion. You're the reason why there's a fucking Lambo parked outside my house. Like you know, it's like slide him a mm-hmm. milli, bro. Just like, yeah, hey, man, it's like yeah, it's like Keanu I heard Reeves. Marvel screwing you over. And that builds his that builds yeah. his stock up because that's where he gets out there. Exactly. And then everybody's like, "Oh yeah." That's why everyone loves Keanu Reeves, bro. Like, like when he did like the Matrix, you know, he turned around and made every single person on the CGI team a millionaire because he's like, "You guys fucking changed the world here, and you're getting fucking nothing for it." He literally paid. Yeah. He turned them all into millionaires. Like, I think everybody insane. loves him because he's an immortal and he's had thousands of years of true. charisma practice. True, true, true. I mean, but he can't save a video game. Who can who these can. days? I, I thought he, I thought he did fucking great in that game. Well, I mean, I look at Norman. I, I, I no, he did. Game. He did great. I love. He that did game. great. I, I, I don't, I don't care what people say about that you game. Think, I thought it do was you think fantastic. him and Do you think him and Norman get together and Keanu plays Death Stranding and Norman plays Cyberpunk and they both just cry? <laughs> <laughs> sure. <that's> <laughs> <weird>. <laughs> uh. 
yeah, guys, we're about 2.15 in, so I think uh, this is probably a good little breaking point for us. If, unless, right. unless anyone has anything else to bring up. No, sir. Um, I could talk for five I, more hours if you wanted, like 100%. Well, I, I put up some stuff in the po- in the podcast section, oh, shit. and um, I saw that, that Dave Batista wasn't asked to do any voice acting. Yeah, I saw that. Mm-hmm. They're just going to make him grunt. <clears throat> I don't and know. Yeah, I don't know why. I think it's it's I, it's very well known that this is this his next movie is his last one. So I think they're kind of probably I think he's like, gonna die. I think they're like well James Gunn is definitely gonna kill him. Hundred percent. I think yeah, I think 100%. Uh, Adam Warlock is gonna come in and kill him. Like like I think that's obvious. Um but I think that they know that as well. They know he's coming to an end, so it's like why put him in now when we're gonna have to take him out after? I think yeah. I think I think that's why. Like it's why uh, it's why Chris I'm Evans like, isn't doing any voice or anything like that, you know? I would like to see the episode before I like kind of make a comment about that because like what if it's just like he has two lines and like yeah. we're not gonna get him in for like two lines you know makes sense yeah. mm-hmm. it's like we're gonna have to pay him so much fucking money to get him in to say two two lines and like to be honest yeah. if that was the case and again this is just me being a fucking nerd but if I was Dave Batista and I I'd fucking do it for free do you know what I mean it's like here's me recording all the lines on my iPhone or I do it on this fucking mic that cost me 500 euro How and it's much? like boom there's all, there's the lines I'll do it for free it's like Chris Hemsworth did mm-hmm. that for, for love you're not doing it for free bro how much money have they paid Vin Diesel to say three different words I know bro I I'm am saying, Groot what I'm saying is if they're gonna pay they're obviously paying Vin Diesel for that which is ridiculous but I'm saying if something like what if came out and I was Dave Batista, I would want to be part of it. I wouldn't want somebody else to replace my character. So I'd be like, yeah, I'll do it for free, guys, because fuck it, I want to be part of it. If you're not going to pay me, if you're going to be stingy, it doesn't really matter. They've made him multi, multi millionaire anyway. So it's like, yeah, I'll do a couple of, I'll say a couple of lines for free. Fuck it. You know, just to be yeah. part, just to be part of it. Like, you know, because it's, it kind of, it's kind of ruins it for the character. Like, it's like, why have they not asked Dave Bautista? It kind of opens its own, like, can of worms in a different way. It's like, well, what the fuck is going on now? Like, you know, you're, it, it, bring, it just brings bad press. Like, I would just mm-hmm. be like, let's just do it. Still, I'll do it for free. Yeah, let's go. I mean, but but Chris Evans is a revered character in the MCU. So for them to not bring him in as a voice actor, although they're done with the contract, to not bring him in and say, hey, can you do some do some lines? We'll pay you for it. Like, I think they're okay with like going with other voice actors at this point now. Big time. I'm sure um, like, like Star Wars, do, Star Wars do that as well. Like, you know, they got someone else in to do Obi-Wan instead of asking Hugh McGregor to do voice work for mm-hmm. all the animations and stuff. Like, uh, yeah. It makes sense. But a hey, quick side note, Vento, I have a quick question for you. Are they doing, um, I know you said we didn't want to talk too much about Titans here. Are they doing three episodes per week? Probably not. You know, I, I, I think they, for the, launch, the opening. for the launch week, I think they've done three and then it'll go back to one for the rest. I would say, I think they did that last right. season as well. They kind of launched three episodes at the beginning and then it went to week by week, single episodes. How many uh, episodes total? Uh, 10 or 12. The last season, oh. the, the first couple of seasons were weird because they had some kind of, um, they had some kind of shooting issue where they ended up using what was meant to be the last episode of season one. They ended up using it as the first episode of season two. Mm-hmm. Kind of, kind of strange, but yeah, the show's kind mm-hmm. of all over the place when it comes to episodes. It's not I bet set I didn't. Up. It's one of those shows I didn't find it until it was all out, so I binged everything. Yeah, I loved, I love like, that dude. There's nothing better. It's like, such see, a good binge show, dude. You see so many memes of that online where it's like you know finding a show that's on season five and there's like 22 episodes per season. You're like. You're literally in heaven, like. <laughs> You're like I'm I not love, sleeping love, for the next couple yeah, of days. I love that, dude. I think I'm trying to think what program. Like it's happened to me a few times, where I've had like you know three or four seasons worth of shit to watch like straight away, and it's just like, oh, this is so good. How have I not been watching this for years? Like, yeah, that's oh, fantastic. I love it. I thought I was for Game of Thrones. I didn't start watching Game of Thrones until I, me and Meech binged Game of Thrones, like the month before the final season came out man did we get bamboozled yeah <laughs> i did I just on some of the stuff you put in the discord there alex and um, that loki fact there with the spider-man writers and the loki writers working together um mm-hmm. I, I, yeah, I, I i heard about that and i thought it's a good idea um like you know the guys who are writing loki are like this is what we're planning to do does this fuck up what you're trying to do in your movie because <laughs> you know we don't want to do something and then it's like it completely contradicts like i think every marvel like they're in a cinematic universe they should all be talking to each other like you know what i mean you can't have people working on separate projects and then when they release them it's like oh shit this doesn't actually link up with this like so it would make sense to me that they would all have to be talking to each other like you know 
but yeah, it's, it's great synergy. Yeah, it has. Sure. I would think contractively they would have to do that, right? Like you would, mm-hmm. you, you couldn't be, especially with multiverse bullshit and everything. Like they can't be like doing stuff where it's just like, oh yeah, Loki did this, and you know, then in Spider Man, it's like that has nothing, like no carry on to what happened. Like it just, it wouldn't make any sense. So, well, yeah. and because Sony is still part of the picture, if they ruin that movie, there could be issues. Yeah. You know what I mean? They can't ruin that movie, man. If that movie mm. was like the worst fucking thing that they could put out, it would still be amazing. Fact. <laughs> even if to- even if Toby's not in it, it's still gonna be amazing. <laughs> let's just, uh, let's just Toby's say, not like, in it. I'd never hear the end of it, bro. Yeah. See, I think there's a real fear that Toby won't be in it, and then Toby will show up in in Doctor Strange too because it's a Sam Raimi movie, and that makes a lot of sense as well. But I think if he's not in it, I'm just not going to hear the end of it for a solid year. It's going to be like, I can't believe oh, you. Like, a yeah. year? We can't, we can't, we can't let it. Oh, Molly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, God, I'm ready for it, though. I'll, I'll, I'll take it on the chain. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Hope your spidey sense helped you out. Oh, dude. Dude, I can't. I'm just, Peter, I'm ready. Peter Tingle? Whoa. Your Peter Tingle. That's what they that call it. Happen. Yeah, call it a little Peter Peter Tingle. That's what they call it in the MCU, <laughs> the Peter Tingle. And yeah, I, I honestly like. I think the worst, the worst fucking movie that they could put out of that would still be good. With everything that we know for certain that's gonna happen in it, it's just gonna be crazy. Like it's mm-hmm. Sinister Six, like from the Sony universe. Like it's like, how could that be bad? You know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, guys. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Um, and on that note, <laughs> yeah. So Alex, sorry, I, I say well, I just have a big announcement. I hope you don't mm. mind me saying this. Um, Please. So uh, you guys know that I'm. I've been working very hard trying to get my education finished. Yes, sir. And I've also been working late nights and and having like schedule issues here and there. And I, you know, um, but. Re- Regardless, um, I'm very thankful for everyone for giving me the love and support that you've all had. And I just I just want to say thank you um, before I make my announcement. Um, so the house that I currently live in has been sold. Okay. Uh-huh. Um, therefore, I had to quit my job. And so I will be moving. And um, I don't know if I'm going to have any sort of like communication material, like during the move, but I will let you guys know. Yeah. So I may or may not be available for, for a few weeks. That's fine. Oh, um, okay. the, that is fine. So don't, okay. don't, and, feel, don't feel pressured to be here is all I'll say. You know, we, yeah, yeah. if you need to take a few weeks off, that's perfectly <clears> fine. Like, you know what I mean? Like don't, this should be the last thing that you think about if you're, you know, like that seems like there's a lot of shit going on right now. So hundred percent, don't be thinking about this. Like, you know, I, I just care so much about you guys and I'm having yeah. so much fun that like being away from it, it's probably going to make me a little sad a couple weeks. <laughs> uh, honestly, dude, like, and I, I I'm not just, I'm not just saying this as well. Like this, what? Is, this is my favorite part of the week as well. So like, you know, I love, I love, I love, yeah. it. Like, I love it. So, oh yeah. I'm just going to use the time you're gone to say things that you can't refute. I'm gonna look <laughs> Are up you just going to talk? Words, you're just going to talk shit about the Hulk takes, <laughs> all the worst Hulk takes I can find. That's what I'm bringing up. Yeah. Um, but uh, starting, I would say starting the 27th, we'll see how things are. I may or may not be available for uh, for a while. So. Yeah, yeah. That's cool, dude. Okay. That's yeah, cool. Yeah, just take care of that because once you're done with that, you know, hopefully you'll be in a place that it'll be long term and you won't have to mm-hmm. worry about it again for a long time. Yeah. And I've already contacted my professor about working remotely for my last uh, semester. Even if even mm-hmm. if you wanted, and I know like cause how important it is to you, like, you know, if you want to fucking jump on a call with us on your phone like i don't give a shit like you know we don't need a professional mic here like you know like i've not but like i i had said something to um to ghosted about coming on the show and he's like oh bro i don't have a setup like you guys i'm like i don't give a fuck about that like as long as we can hear you you know what i mean and like we don't even need to see you like you know i don't mind bringing in people that like our audio only like does, that doesn't bother me like you know we're not yeah. okay we're not the joe rogan experience here like you know it's like <laughs> it doesn't need to be <laughs> fucking professional you know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm, I'm well happy with just you jumping in and mm-hmm. like I don't even know what it looks like. We, I think I can focus on the cameras only and keep people to the side. I think you do that in Discord where like you throw the non videos to one side or something. So, do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? This yeah. is uh, the D team experience. So 
yeah, it's better. Hundred percent, dude. So like, you know, if you're missing us terribly and you can jump on in a voice call only, like, fucking, we're more than happy to have you here, dude. 100%. Oh, I always miss you guys after this. Oh, hundred percent, dude. But yeah, like you, you sort out your living situation and your job and all that sort of thing, bro. That comes, that comes first. That's number one for sure. Thank you. And anything we could do to help, obviously, we're there. I, I can't it. get you a house, so I'm sorry. Yeah, I can't. I can't, can't, buy, I can't no. buy you a house, but uh, it's going to be a bit. Uh, the DMs are open anyway. There. Looks like a couch right behind you. <laughs> there looks like there's a couch right behind you, buddy. Hey, Robo, move over. <laughs> Alex is on his way. No, because as soon as he moves that, Huck's going to get back on the couch. Right now. That's true. Cross country move. <laughs> Alex versus Hulk for the couch. That's something I'd want to see. Be like in Shang Chi, you know, in the, in the tournament. Every time. <laughs> Huck, Huck, the camera takes 45 pounds off Huck. Huck is a monster. <laughs> He's a big boy. Yeah, I love it, dudes. I love it. I've heard him how. <laughs> legend, legend. All right, guys. Thank All you so much for being here. As always, Friday. you guys are amazing. Have a great Friday. We'll talk great to you next week. Bye. What a marvelous chat, everyone. Marvelous. It's marvelous. As chat. always.